will come at our side door again. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Oh, come let us adore. Oh, come let us adore him. Oh, come let us adore him. Christ our Lord, for you alone. Our worthy Lord, Lord, you alone are worthy. Are you alone are worthy? Christ the Lord, we give you all thanksgiving we give to all thanksgiving lord we give you all thanksgiving christ the lord oh lord you are so lovely. Oh, Lord, you are so lovely. Oh, Lord, you are so lovely. Christ the Lord. Lord, you are so worthy, 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 Lord, you are so worthy, oh, Lord, you are so worthy, Christ the Lord. Forever I will praise you, Lord, forever I will praise you, Lord, forever I will praise you, Christ the Lord. Forever I will worship. Forever I will worship. Forever I will worship. Christ the Sing, 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 sing to the Lord. Sing, 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 sing to the Lord. Oh, sing, 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 sing to the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, guys. It's just two chords, man. It's just two chords. <laughs> oh, sing, 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 sing. To the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woohoo. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord with all my soul, with all that is within me. 
I will bless the Lord with all my soul, with all that is within me. Come on. Come on now. I will bless the Lord with all that is within me. I will bless and praise His holy name. <laughs> I will bless the Lord with all that is within me. I will bless and praise His holy name. We have to put me in here so they can hear me. I will bless the Lord with all my soul, with all that is within me. I will bless the Lord with all my soul, with all that is within me. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord with all my soul, with all that is within me. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord with all my soul, with all that is within me. Soko si tayo romandeo. I will bless the Lord with all my soul, with all that is within me. <laughs> Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord with all my soul, with all that is within me. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to have music practice. And we're just going to go ahead and teach all of you how to flow in the Holy Ghost. First thing you got to do is you got to get fear and intimidation out of the way. And then you just got to get joyful. So you go ahead and start with the guitar. And you got the bass going. Here, bang on the piano. You know how to bang? I will bless the Lord with all my soul and all that is within me. I will bless the Lord with all my soul, with all that is. Okay, if I do that, do you know what that means? You know what that means? How many of you know what that means? What, how many know what that means? For what? That's right, okay, good. Okay? So now you guys know what it means too. I will bless the Lord with all my soul and all that is within me. <laughs> bless the Lord with all my soul. All that is I will bless his oh hey hey come on bang on it bang on it get it loud all that is
Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Woohoo! Hallelujah. Father, we praise you. 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 Father, we praise you, holy God, holy Lord, holy God, holy thou art holy, merciful and mighty, early in the morning. My song shall rise to you, ah, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, God in three persons, bless Holy, thou art holy, O merciful and mighty. I want to sing it like this. I want to say, Holy, thou art holy. All your saints adore you. Holy, thou art holy, and all your saints adore. And early in the morning, our song shall rise to thee. Holy, thou art holy, Lord God Almighty. God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. And I lift my voice, hallelujah, to worship. Worship you, O my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, and let me be a sweet, sweet sound. In your ear. Almighty God, a living God, and praise belongs to you. All praise belongs to you, Lord. Just stretch your hands out towards heaven because I want you to be able to prophesy. And you're not going to be able to prophesy until you go in a place. You have to be able to, you have to be willing to go into a realm of praise where your heart is captivated by the whole dynamics of praise. Too many people get lost up in all the kind of stuff that just goes on in the merchandising of things. Oh, we just want you to begin to worship him. We want you to begin to praise the king of kings. Sometimes that's why we just try to sing really simple songs for you. 
just so that you'll just get captivated. And just be called away and worship to the King of Kings. And then the praise will flow forth from you. And when the praise will come forth from you, the prophecy will begin to flow. And that same, that's the same realm for every dimension of God's divine power and glory. The things that you want, so it's so easy to happen. All you have to do is just be willing to participate with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind and all your strength. You need to start. You need to start. No man can she be here, no more she pay a day, she palat a day, pay the pay. Here if she pick here, no matter pay a tear. Over the TC to the non of the banana, a key for your shit. I tell you, too. Ha 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 you are my life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, you are my hope. Jesus, you are my Savior.
In spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. For holy is the Lord. In all of your ways. Oh, we will worship you. In spirit and in truth. For holy are you, Lord. For holy are you, Lord, in all of your ways. Lord, we will worship you in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> For holy are you, Lord. Woohoo! In all of your ways, yes, holy are you, Lord. In all of your ways, oh, holy are you, Lord. In all of your ways. Jesus, for Jesus, for Jesus, for Jesus, for Jesus, for Jesus, we worship you. Lord Jesus, we lift our voice in praise and thanksgiving unto you. Almighty God, Father, we pray in Jesus' mighty name that your praise and that your prayer and the utterance, O God, of thanksgiving will come up out of every person's being with floods of joy, with floods of expression by you, Holy Ghost. The thanks, Father, that have stood in the way. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to strengthen the hands of your people. Father, and cause them under, how to, to understand, oh God, to rise up and begin to worship you and praise you. Oh God, to begin to lift up their voice of thanksgiving as they take a hold of all that you have given. Hallelujah. We take hold of your mercies, oh God, that endure forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the living God. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Lord, we give thanks unto you, O God, our King. We worship you, Almighty God. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. 
We worship you, Lord. Yeah, come on now. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Thank you, Father, for your joy. Thank you, Father God, for your wonderful praise that comes up out of us like rivers. Inexhaustible ones. <laughs> Hallelujah. Gambra mamangere sudana manangere mandu karana mandeya manandera Hiramana la mandeya masuru mangareya magana manandeya mandera ne Urumama narameya namuzilena mangere mudura mandu Kuravana ne mangeya lemanjela namo namandera mandu Hirasana ne mandeya mamangora manandera wasu Pura mama la la sierra ma bande bai Kere vele vele mongo lo soro batur ma mele anai Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia Pura mama manandir satane Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia Kere mana manje se di mani bremayan Kiri mama mana naya mi mama naya lo boso tore dea. Kiri mama na nangi la mano boro bo 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 be meni na la na mengi de se premo no lo mungse se ya tu. Zika la mane breve mala la na mengi le na mana na mungo ro mungse se ya rama mana ya le ya se. Alleluia. Se ko rama mana na la ni be ya lo mungse tore di dia la. Alleluia. Holy is the Lord. Kiri mama na na shiri na man kiri na mama bre me bedi di aradas. Kila na na mama nega na man dobra mama seve na nega dobra ba. Hallelujah. 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 Holy, holy, holy. Ira mama mandare sira mama mandare dei vali. Kura mama mande che di si ana non mangoro ma ne biara maneo. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the presence of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for the working of the mighty Holy Spirit, for the signs and wonders in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for the working of your mighty Holy Spirit, for all of your signs and wonders in our lives. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Father, for the workings of your mighty Holy Spirit in our lives. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for the signs and the wonders. Thank you, Father, for your presence in our life. Hallelujah. Bakasara de kikara na magara na sada di ila bakaria fra babaki di ekaro soto ro nombre de. Eki ara na kataya la mosoto ro dorimi ara na bakarina na makieki ara na kushiki ara de kiena kataya. Ira be 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 ki ana na kushata ra nei anda na me dei ati doloba kushire be be ati ilaba tu vaya. Urama ma mandori, urama ma manduru ti se remeno robo robo se reveya. Urama ma manderi mandera be ki ala la la basa tara nei na la la na manga la nei anda la la na talo do dia. Urama ma mandere da mangia la chiesa da mani nei 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 una mocco ma mande premendo lo monsanna la la mengli la bea te a te a rapa barre de ti via non so come via ra so fra barre de vevre de vevre e cura so fra barre de te via Jesus Jesus 
Lord Jesus, we thank you for your precious blood that washes and cleanses. Lord, we thank you for your mighty love, O oh God, that stands up in the midst of the people who reject you, but Lord God, you still pursue them. Father, thank you that you call us unto yourself, O oh God. We thank you for the working of the Holy Spirit, for the mighty working of the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, we ask you to take over. Lord God, we ask you to take over the emotions, the appetites, the passions, the desires of our lives. Oh Lord, that we may begin to really truly live. That we may begin to really truly participate with what life is all about, with the expressions of life, with the emotions of life, with the passions of life, with your love and with your joy, with your peace, oh God, and with your goodness. Ha ha, ha ha, ha. With your praise and with your thanksgiving, oh Lord. Nakitaya bota basataya, ha. Nakaya potorona. Nakaya potorona mai. Nakaya potorona mai, na. So kaya potoroma sata. Kaposa toronea. Kaposa pe rene. Sapateo makusi. Sapakato si nakaya ti. Sakataya lomonai. Hababa de kebrebe. Well, you know, it's our desire to impart to you and help you understand how to move past everything that belongs to the spirit of this world. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's a fortified force. The spirit of disobedience that now works right now and the children of disobedience, the prince and the power of the air, the God of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places, that which humanity calls normal within the framework of all the things that belong to lies and deceit and hate and strife and iniquity. That's a whole lot to come up against. So you're going to have to learn how to yield your emotions to holy emotions. You're going to have to learn how to give yourself over to a realm of divine power and grace. A place that belongs to the realm of heaven. Then you're going to be filled up and satisfied with that which is, belongs to abundant life. The life of God. The life of Jesus Christ. And then all this other stuff comes at you. I mean, it's just nothing but an enemy that you will not yield your members to. That you won't yield your emotions to. Your thoughts. Your appetites. You recognize, you can recognize sin and iniquity far off. Today, Satan is very good at propagating the lust of the flesh through so many different forms of media. But when you begin to live over here in this life of divine power and grace, you see that stuff, you know exactly what it is. You see the fangs behind it, the poison in it, the death that lies there. You don't even go past it. You don't go, you, you bypass it, you don't go near it. Because you love staying over here in glory land. Just over in the glory land there with the mighty host I stand. Just over in the glory land. Just over in the glory land there with the mighty host I stand. Just over in the glory land. I'm living in the heavenly realm. Hallelujah. I'm living in the place where Jesus Christ is found, where the flowing of the rivers of the Spirit of the Lord come gushing forth forevermore. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. La brosa taradea. Hakana ekeshe kanamea tai. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have sickness in your body tonight, the Lord wants to heal you right there while you're just praising Him and worshiping Him. If you've got problems, sorrows, hurts, pains in your heart, the Lord wants to heal you. The balm and Gilead is here tonight. The ministry of Jesus that binds up the broken in heart is here. going to heal you. 
your mind's been all twisted by the things of this world and you think that filth of this world is good, Father going to heal you, give you a right mind. That's insanity. It's insanity to believe that you must sin more or less every day. It's insanity. By definition, in Satan. Insanity. That's, what the, that's how you parse out the word. There is a realm of heaven which Jesus Christ died for you and I to have. When he was crucified at Calvary's cross and his body was broken like a piece of bread, he made a way for us to enter in to a relationship with Father to exit this world. I have exited this world. I've had my own exited. Exit. Huh? Hallelujah. I've had my own exodus. Hallelujah. Have you had an exodus? Have you exited this world into a heavenly realm? Hallelujah. Well, you can be seated. People, you know, we're here tonight because God has told us to teach people righteousness, to teach people about the ways of righteousness. The Lord has come to lead us in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. Isn't that beautiful? Is wonderful. The righteousness which is by faith says it like this. See, there is a righteousness which is by faith. A righteousness which is by the faith of Jesus Christ. You know what righteous, how this righteousness came by this faith? You know what this faith is? This faith is to be born again. This faith is to receive a new heart and to receive a new spirit. This is the faith that allows us to have a miracle transformation by the power of God where we get washed up in a special kind of way. We get scrubbed up in a special kind of way. We get washed by the washing of, of the water of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Spirit. That is a wonderful privilege that we have. The miracle of salvation. What a cleansing. Can't get cleaner than to get regenerated. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can't get cleaner than to be born again. A radical transformation, new heart, new spirit. Don't think the same way. Don't want the same way. Don't desire the same way. Hallelujah. We live in a time that there is more her heretical doctrines taught from the church pulpit than at any time in the church age, even though in the third and the fourth centuries, third and fourth century, more heresy came into the church during that period of time than any other period of time. But now we've eclipsed it in our day now. Now people run around totally misunderstanding the things that Paul said. Just really just two passages to what we would call pericopes of Scripture where Paul referred to the, that there were none righteous, no, not one, that all, all had turned to the air of their own way. And uh, speaking, bringing everybody into a place of needing Jesus, need to be born again, needing redemption. And then people want to go and misapply that to the saints of God who have received the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You must understand that he who knew no sin became sin for us, that you and I might be born, made the righteousness of God. We have to understand that he bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we now being dead or cut off to sin might live unto righteousness by whose wound we were healed. We've got to come to understand that with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and with the heart man believes unto righteousness. See, this is the faith which is by righteousness. This is the faith that comes. This is the righteousness which comes by faith. If you open up your Bibles to Romans chapter 8, verse, or verse, Romans chapter 10, verse 6, you would hear about a righteousness that comes to us by faith. And then we understand that in this righteousness that comes to us by faith, it wasn't something that somebody went out and sought after. Somebody through their own wisdom and their own pursuit were able to grab a hold of and come to understand and bring it down. And help everybody else to realize, oh, this is how it works. No, God, by His own love and kindness, did it for us. You know, I'm amazed sometimes when I think about the great prophets that were alive together. Prophets like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Especially Jeremiah and Ezekiel. They were two very unique prophets. And in both cases, they said that the Lord, Isaiah, especially Isaiah and Ezekiel, said that the Lord looked for an, an intercessor, and he found none. Now, these are men of the priesthood. These are priests. These are men have been, whose daddy and grandfather all the way back to Aaron had been separated unto the Lord. And, you know, I thought about how that, you know, Jeremiah, he was a great 
prophet of God, and the Lord separated him from the womb to be a prophet, but he didn't want to prophesy. He didn't want to have nothing to do with it. He's like, no. Look, I don't want to do it. And then in Ezekiel, when God grabbed out of Ezekiel, the scripture says he went in the anger of his spirit. He went against his will. You know what the Lord did? The Lord just said, look, I didn't talk to you. Forgive me. Grabbed him by the hair of his head like this and said, come here. And he took him up into heaven. Uh -huh. And then he carried him over to Jerusalem, set him down, and said, look at what's going on over here. Uh huh? Wow. Wow. Father said he looked for an intercessor and he found none. There was nobody to stand in the gap. And of course, it had gotten so bad that he also said, even if Noah was here or Job was here or Daniel was here, still they would only save their own selves because I'm pouring out my indignation, my wrath on the sin and iniquity. People think that God somehow has justified sin and iniquity. He's still as angry about it as he's ever been. It's just still as much of death. It's still just as much demonic as it's ever been. And he's going to destroy everybody who partakes of it. And he's made a way to where that you and I could come out from among them, be separate, separate, not touch the unclean thing. He's made a way where you and I could be washed in his blood, cleansed from all the former things, that we could be born anew, have no more of those desires, no more of the tyranny and the power of sin and death reigning over us. But people love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. They like evil. They like living their own life. God's made a way where we can live his life, but we still rather live ours. We're stupid by definition. God's given us an abundant life, and we want to live a sour life. God's given us a blessed life. We want to live a cursed life. God's given us uh, eternal life, and we want to step over and stay over in the realm of death, say we just can't live without death. I just can't live without pain. I just can't live without abusing myself and abusing somebody else. That's absolute insanity by definition. God came and opened up our eyes and gave us an understanding that we might know him. Hallelujah. He came and filled us with his spirit, his Holy Spirit, so that we might feel the same way about life that he does. Hallelujah. He came to give us his same attitude. <laughs> he came to get latitude and, and, and longitude and altitude. I mean, same place. Amen. Get to live in the heavenly realm. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> you know, so, listen. I mean, how do you live in hell long enough? I mean, now others invited us to come live in heaven. Who wants to go back to hell after they've been in heaven? No. no way. Who wants to go back to communing with demon spirits when you've been around the Holy Spirit? Who wants to go back to hating when you've been over here in the realms of love? Who wants to go back to condemnation when you've brought, been brought into peace? Who wants to go back into sorrow and sadness when you've been given joy unspeakable and gladness? I mean, come on. Come on now. Oh, you guys are really silent tonight. You're just tired. <laughs> He just tired. Ha ha. Paul. I I hope you get just so hungry tonight for God that he just you know hunger and thirst causes heaven to uh, zero in on you. <laughs> Ground zero, so to speak. <laughs> That's what I mean by zero in on you. <laughs> and I mean I just pray God get some heat seeking missiles after you tonight, right out of heaven. And the power of God and the glory of God explodes on in the inside of you. Yeah. Because, listen, it, it, listen, nobody's going to be changed from the outside. There's no way I can talk to you. Anybody else can talk to you from the word of God. God can come talk to you from his word, declare these things to you, speak these things to you. Until you have a change on the inside, until something happens on the inside, you're willing to allow something to happen on the inside you will remain the same. You will not understand the way of the righteous. You will not understand the way of the redeemed. It will be too high for you. It will be out of your reach. You will not be able to attain it. When you hear people talk about living in righteousness and true holiness, you'll think they're absolutely out of their mind. They're living in a false reality because you'll define your reality as being it. And I'm telling you, God wants to give you an understanding that, he, that you might know him. He wants to come. He wants to teach you righteousness and holiness. I mean, really, uh, the reality of it is we, we, we need to be. It, it would be wonderful if before everybody met the master, uh, before anybody ever said, Jesus, come rule over me. And he's ruling right now, whether you're going to let him or not. It's just up to you. But that we would have such a heart like Zechariah had, you know, and Zechariah, he was an old guy, and 
his wife was old and he goes in according to his administration to offer prayer and offer incense upon the altar uh, before the Lord for all the nation of Israel. And the Lord appears to him and says, you're going to have a son. You're going to name him Zechariah. And Zechariah made a mistake. He started to argue with God. And the Lord said, I'm not going to hear it. You're messing the whole thing up with what you're saying. So now we're just going to help you out. And rather than get, go down to uh, Home Depot and get some Gorilla Tape to tape you up so that you quit messing the thing up, you're going to be dumb. And, huh? Right? Amen. Hallelujah. And he was actually deaf, too. He was dumb and deaf. And, it could, and so he had to write, you know, I mean, he couldn't speak and he couldn't hear. They had, to, they had to try to make signs to him, write to him. He's got to try to write back to them, you know. But bottom line of it is, he was so ready for, the, he was so ready for salvation because when he heard the joyful sound, when he heard the announcement of the good news, he said, praise God. We get to live the rest of our life in righteousness and holiness. For most people in this world, they have been so indoctrinated by demon spirits. They have been so deceived by the powers of darkness. That is just absolutely nonsense. They can't even relate to that. That sounds like something so weird and so foreign and so strange. Because it is so weird and it is so foreign and it is so strange. By definition, holiness speaks of the transcendent otherness of God. In other words, God is separately, absolutely separate, absolutely other, absolutely not. There's nothing about the world in him and nothing in the world is about him. All that is in the world is evil and wickedness. All that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye and the pride of life. Has nothing to do with Father. He's not in it. He's completely separate. And now he and his love has invited us to all come over into his separateness. But he doesn't allow us to bring that otherness of the world into his separateness. He cleanses us with the blood of Jesus Christ. He makes us a new creation so that we step in. To, we, tr we actually have a regeneration. We actually have a translation. We actually have a transformation. These are all New Testament words. I can't help it. You don't hear it in the pulpit just because we live in an apostate era of time where there's more heresy taught from the, from the streets and from the pulpits of Southern California than I've ever heard saying, oh, we just a bunch of sinners. Oh, we just all unrighteous. That is the biggest blasphemy against the blood of Jesus Christ and the miracle of salvation and the work of the new creation that has ever been propagated. And people flock to it by the tens of thousands because they're under demonic power. I'm telling you, Father's going to come and he's going to glorify the name of his son, Jesus. He's going to speak on his own behalf. He's not going to allow Jesus' name to be polluted anymore. He, he, there's, God has a threshold on it. He lets people, he gives them a space and time to repent. He's merciful, it's good that he does. But there comes a time he says, no, I'm not going to have my name profaned anymore. You're not going to take me and trash me with your iniquity. You're not going to hook me up with the devil and have us camping out in the same room. You're not going to put my name in the category of all this defamation and all this unholy thing. Ha <laughs> ha. And, and desecrate it. And say that you, I mean, I think that the worst thing the father is a false witness. People bearing false witness saying, I'm saved. You're not saved. Until you've been born again and you've got received a new heart and a new spirit. And now you have received a divine nature that has escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And you desire holy things and you give yourself over to holy things. And you don't want the things of this world. And you have the fear of the Lord God in your life. And you have the testimony and the witness of the Holy Ghost. That you're led by the Spirit. That you walk in the Spirit of holiness. And that you, that you live by the Spirit of holiness. You have no witness and no testimony that you're other than anything. Than a, than a religious person just like a Hindu, a Buddhist, or whatever else. There's all kinds of religion and there's a Christian one too. And it's about time God's people get violent about it that really know the truth. And stand up and say, we're here. I'm not listening no more of the nonsense. I'm not going to have God's name. I'm not going to have Jesus' blood drugged through the streets anymore, trampled underfoot, brought to an open shame, hooked up with sin and iniquity. No, I'm going to tell you, there's a fountain that flows from Christ Jesus. There's a fountain that flows from Emmanuel's veins. The sinner plunges there, deep within there, and loses all his guilty stains. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ washes us and cleanses us so that we're no longer under the power of sin. 
We're no longer under the authority of sin and death. This is what Paul's speaking about in Romans chapter 6. It's his whole message of Romans chapter 6. You're no longer under the domain of sin. You're no longer under the reign of sin. Sin shall have no more power of you. Sin shall have no more dominion over you. He tells us that we the righteousness of God. We don't yield our mem members to sin anymore, but we yield them to the we as weapons of righteousness. There we go, that word again. Unto holiness. Paul said we've been created anew, recreated anew. And when God formed Adam in from the dust of the earth, he formed him with his outward, like, outward appearance and inward likeness. When, when, when uh, Adam opened up the door to sin and Satan, he lost the inward likeness. He kept the outward, he kept the outward appearance but lost the inward likeness. Now, the Lord, through the washing of regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost, has brought the inward likeness back to us. Because he gave us a new heart and he gave us a new spirit. He brought the inward likeness back to us. Because he wrote his laws and his ways upon our heart and upon our mind to do them. Most Gentiles, most people that come in, you know, to try to come into the church and try to understand the Lord, they, they're, they're barren of understanding. They've never known the goodness and the great reward there is in serving the Lord. They've never known the beauty and the splendor of His manifest presence because they walk in obedience. They basically only understood the mercy of God that is extended to disobedient people. They've never come into fellowship and relationship to be able to be endued, with, to be, put on the Lord Jesus Christ, to put on Jesus as a mantle. Hallelujah. <laughs> to have the mind of the Spirit, to walk in the mind of the Spirit, to be led by the Spirit of holiness, uh, to live by the Spirit, to know Him. <laughs> Hallelujah. To, because I'm telling you, there are pleasures that are at His right hand are far greater than any pleasures that you've ever had in this world. People say they can't stop sinning because they just are all hooked on the earthly pleasures. They can't stop sinning because they're all hooked on, on, on sensual ugliness and wretchedness. But I'm going to tell you right now that the spiritual laws of life that are in Christ Jesus has liberated those who want to be free from the law of sin and death. That is a beautiful thing. Hallelujah. Now you need to learn how to walk on the spiritual laws. Otherwise, you're going to get a ticket or end up in jail or worse than that, have something bad happen until you get hurt or die. And there's a price to pay. The wages of sin is death. Hallelujah. The gift of God is eternal life. And eternal life, you know, people just want to talk about eternal life being, as it were, a quantity of time. It's a quantity of time, an undefinable quantity of time. But more than that, it's a quality of life. Super, above everything else, you really aren't going to understand the quantity of time. But you really can begin to understand the quality of life. There's nobody in here that can estimate what it looks like three trillion years from now. You might, there's nobody in here. And that's just like scratching the surface of eternity, okay? But what you can begin to really wrap your heart and your hands and your affections around is the quality of life. Ooh, his joy. Hallelujah. His joy unspeakable and full of glory. Huh? His peace that passes understanding. Hallelujah. I got peace like a river. Hallelujah. Ah, he fills my mouth with laughter. Ha, 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 ha. I mean, you can understand these kinds of things. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We want to see God's people have spiritual discernment. You know, if you're tone deaf, you can't tell the difference between a Mozart composition and a howling wind in the woods. Sounds the same. Uh, you have no ability to discern. You can't you have no ability to discern the beauty of it. Oh, God wants to give you spiritual understanding so you can understand the difference between death and life. The difference between uh, temporal pleasures that, belong, that, all ha that have death and pain and wickedness and destruction attached to it to heavenly eternal pleasures that have no end, that is just nothing but a blessing in life forevermore. Now, somebody said, well, we just don't have the capacity. Well, you just don't understand. Nobody told you the good news. I'm here to tell you the good news, that God, by His divine power, has given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. He's given you everything, not some things. I got some good news. Jesus, the liberator, Jesus, the deliverer, came to set the captives free. He's the door, the entrance. He's given you and I access. Anybody who wants out can get out. Amen. You just got to want to get out of your prison. A lot of people like living in their prison. Huh? 
I'm both said a canaya. How's the better if it tell you a Just to walk around their prison, pacing the four walls of their cell, saying, I'm free, I'm free. Oh, praise the Lord, I'm free. No, you're not. You're not free. Jesus wants to set you free, but you're going to have to just surrender your life over to him. Hallelujah. So, you know, I want to just spend a little time with you tonight just talking to you about the word of faith, the righteousness which is by faith that ultimately produces a word of faith in your heart and in your mouth. And it's powerful. And it's not something you got to go learn or attain to or aspire to. You don't have to go up to bring them down, go down to descend down into the pit to bring them up. Huh? You don't have to go searching out, looking across the ocean, looking across the sea, Deuteronomy chapter 30. Huh? He's brought it to us. He's brought this grace to us. He's put his word in our mouth. His word that is sharp. His word that is powerful. His word that is spirit and life. His word that is living. His word that created the universe. His word, I mean, his word that when uh, all of a sudden you begin to enjoy this relationship with the Lord, you can come into a place where you ask him whatever you will and he'll do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, how much did this place call, cost you? It's mammoth. I said, it costs nothing. It costs the word of faith. It costs relationship. The word of faith, hallelujah. Bokorosatea. Lord, this is why I ask you to do this, and then he does it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I love having things around me that I say, I take people and say, you want to see what will happen when you ask the Lord? See this, I asked the Lord, and he did it. See this over here, I asked the Lord, and he did it. See this, what happens? You just ask the Lord, and he did it. I wake up in the morning, some mornings, and i just like, Father, I just, and I start thinking about my children. I think about... We're all adult children now, and I, I, I said, Father, I thank you. You've kept them so many times. I mean, you talk about Satan having an assignment against my life, trying to take me out, trying to assignment against my children, assignment against my stuff. I'm glad I know God who's bigger than the devil. Somebody said, have you seen what the devil's look, doing lately? I said, oh, I haven't looked at the bottom of my feet. I haven't noticed what's on the bottom of my shoes because that's about the only place he's going to be doing anything. Hallelujah. He just keeps us. I mean, it's, just, it's amazing. He, we didn't do all this because we deserve it. People are trying to get something through the deserving. There ain't nothing about, about deserving it. In his love and kindness, he gave it to us. When, when we were dead in our trespasses and sin, he commended his love towards us. He's just an amazing God. huh? If God spared not his own son, but offered him up for the sins of Mark Spitzbergen. Hallelujah. Put your name there. Sins of Leslie, Summer, Brittany. <laughs> Put your name there. How much more shall he also buy and freely give us all things? Well, what things do you want? Freely give me all things. Well, what things is it that you want? You want $100 million? It'll ruin you. Huh? It would ruin you. You, what you need is you need wisdom and be established in faith and be established in obedience to God. Then let God give you something and it'll be a blessing to you. Amen. Hallelujah. I mean, just think about it. He, he, he freely gave us all things. He freely gave us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Who's called us to glory and excellence of character. Yes. Yes. Glory and excellence of character. I, I know that excellence of character isn't something that's too prized today among men, but it's still prized in heaven. Yeah. And I'm telling you right now, it's prized by you when you get into a relationship with somebody and you don't turn around and in four or five years they're hating you. Or even less than that. I mean, now it's like, I think it used to be four or five years. Now it's probably four or five months. <laughs> Why? Because the, pr the pressure of wickedness and the, and the pressure of demonic influence is as it were more intense than ever before. And it's time for God, uh, people to rise up and begin to take hold of the things that he's freely given so that you and I could walk in the glory and the virtue. You and I could give ourselves over to learning righteousness. Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. We've been given a heart that can understand. We've been given a spirit that can understand. We've been given a heart that can communicate with God now. We've been given a spirit. Oh, a miracle. Hallelujah. We've been given the privilege of being one with him. He that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. He's given us a, his Holy Spirit so that our spirit can bear witness with his spirit. Did you notice I'm quoting scripture? Does anybody have any guess how many verses of scripture I have already quoted? Anybody want to take any guess? Come on, because I need this. Anybody want to take any guess of how many verses of scripture I've already quoted? Anybody, just take a guess. Because you're so used to hearing people just blabbing their mouth, talking about something out of the, you know, the latest trend that's you know, whatever. 
People, I'm telling you, this is Word of God going forth here to you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. He's put His Word in my mouth. You see, His Word is in my heart, and it's in my mouth. He put it there. This is the word of faith. It's uh, nothing. It, it, listen, there is nothing impossible when you begin to move in faith. And faith is the cornerstone for everything. It's the central piece, centerpiece of all that God will do through our lives. Without it, it's impossible to please God. Now, if you want to understand how to begin to move in faith and the gift of faith and the working of faith, then you're going to have to start prophesying of yourself. You had to start speaking the word. Don't sit around and talk about how bad to feel and how it ain't working out. And don't know why and wonder who and how long. Just start getting into something where the word of God abides on the inside of you. You've been born of the word to speak by the word, to live by the word, to prophesy over yourself. Somebody said, I will learn how to prophesy. Learn how to prophesy over yourself and decree the things of the spirit. Declare the things of the Spirit. I have people all the time saying, oh, I received a prophecy such and such a time a long time ago. And, and, you know, like that's supposed to, I'm supposed to be impressed. I'm going, what are you talking about? God's prophesied over you right, left, and center more prophecies than you've ever even heard. And you've not hardly done any of them. Who cares about what some man said? And besides that, prophecy is not even supposed to be given to anyone unless there's other witnesses there that can judge whether it's right or wrong. It's not supposed to be done in silent. It's supposed to be done in a public place. I can't help it. There's a bunch of rebellion and a bunch of stiff-necked people running around the place trying to make it up as they go. Don't listen to none of them. God put his glory in the midst of the church, and that's where it belongs, and you need to get there quick. Hallelujah. He put in the church apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers and his church is the only safe place. He started his church on the day that he baptized it in the Holy Ghost and fire. Hallelujah. And it's never quit burning. Hallelujah. It's still on fire today. Somebody say, what church you go to? The same one that Apostle Paul goes to. I'm in the same one that Peter's in. I'm in the one that Jesus has started. He's the head of. Hallelujah. It stands in the midst of. Uh, Kananea. Hallelujah. It's something very special about his church. It's unique about his church. You'll always hear his church, the ministers of his church, only declaring his word and not speaking of themselves. They cease to do their own pleasure and speak according to their own word. And then God is beginning to cause them to ride upon their high places and feed them with the inheritance of Jacob. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And it doesn't come at a very expensive price to you. All you got to do is just say, you know what? I'm going to quit learning the ways of this world. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit tending and waiting on myself hand and foot. <laughs> Taking care of my every little, every little need. And I'm going to start being the servant of God and come under his rule. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 America is on the threshold of tyranny. America is on the threshold of coming under the dictatorships of things that have happened over and again in other societies. Why? Because they left the ways of walking with God and, 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 and chose immorality. They chose the tyranny of Satan spiritually. And that which is in the realms of the spiritual always is reflected and ultimately reflected in the realms of the natural. We got to get ready. And I can tell you right now, it doesn't take long to tell people when people start drinking of the cup that they poured that they say, this is a sour drink. I need something fresh. It isn't too long after people begin to discover that they chose the way of death and destruction that they begin to cry out for deliverance. I, you know, I can see one of the reasons that the Lord would have given to us such a big building, such a mammoth place. Somebody said to me the other day, said, well, what are you going to be able to get the permit to fix the other place up across the parking lot? I said, I, I tell you right now, I'm not going to need a permit. I'm not going to need one because the things of this America is about to change radically. Things are shifting around. Hallelujah. I praise God I dwell in a secret place. I abide in, uh, under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. So that there's no evil thing that can come nigh my dwelling. No plague can come nigh my dwelling. Though a thousand fall by my side, ten thousand by my right hand, it cannot come by me, to me, near me. Amen. No weapon formed against me can prosper because I'm over here in the midst of the fire of God. I'm totally protected. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter what happens. Doesn't matter. A, 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 a Russian sub can launch a, a, a nuclear warhead from right off our shores over there in an international waters with some place you could, uh, as far as you could, you know, imagine with binoculars and see it. And they can launch that thing and everything starts blowing up. We all good. I'm good. I don't know about you. 
I'm good. Hallelujah. Uh, but the Lord assures me that I'm fine. And you're going to have to be assured whether or not you're fine as well. And you're going to have to get the assurance from the same place I got it. The word of faith is near me, nigh me, in me, living by me, in me, in my heart, and in my mouth. And let me tell you how this word of faith works. I'm going to tell you what happens. So that, with, so that if we will confess with our mouth, hallelujah, this is the word of faith. And it, what does it do? It brings us into all the riches and the expanse of heaven. It brings us into being co inheritors with Jesus Christ and heirs with God, not just in the life to come, but the life right now. Because having received life, having received the life of God, having received the life of the Spirit, having received the life of Jesus Christ, having received, in other words, the eternal life, an unending life. That life has brought to us every dimension of those things that belong to his goodness and to his grace and to his power. And isn't, isn't it so wonderful? Isn't it so wonderful? And so when I say, if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, I'll be delivered. I'll be saved. What does saved mean? Paul defines saved. Nobody needs to define saved. Forget Webster's Dictionary and anybody else's. Paul defined saved. He defined it in um, Titus chapter 3, verse 4 and 5. And of course, I've already quoted verse 5 a couple of times here tonight. But he said, you're saved. He said, you're saved. And then what did he say? You're saved by what? You're saved by what? He said, you're saved by the washing of the water of regeneration. That's radical. How do you get regenerated? You get born again. How do you get born again? You get born by the Holy Ghost. The Spirit of the living God comes over you. The power of the Most High overshadows you. And that holy thing that is born on the inside of you is Christ formed in you. Remember the front rows like Shamu. Christ formed in you. I'm not purposely spitting on anyone. I'm a Spitzbergen. Just the way it works. Halapositeia. Holla. I wish I could talk without spitting. <laughs> Hallelujah. Somebody said, just slow down. I can't. It's a flood. Floodgates are open. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. With my mouth, I confess. With my confession. My confession is that God raised Jesus from the dead. Well, what happens? When, how, does that, how does that begin to equate into some living experience? Because I am raised up together with him. His resurrection resulted in my resurrection. So that Paul said in Colossians chapter 3, If you then be risen with Christ. Huh? Somebody said, oh, I went over there and they said they've been resurrected from the dead <laughs> and that they got an immortal body. Ain't nobody said that. You liar. Pants on fire. Hiding from the truth. Running to hiding in shame like Adam because of sin. I hope I'm real plainness of speech. I've asked God to cause me to speak with all plainness of speech. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah. Hallelujah. I'm saying we, there's an inward resurrection. Is an in, I've been born. See, Peter said that we are born again of the resurrection. I've been born of the resurrection. Hallelujah. The resurrection uh, uh, from a spiritual state of death to now being alive with Jesus Christ. So this is the creed of the church of Jesus Christ. The creed of the church of Jesus Christ is, I am crucified with Christ. Say it. I am crucified with Christ. Wow. Vaxadanea <laughs> botamande. Now that you crucified, I am buried with him by baptism into his death. I am buried with him by baptism into his death. Wow. Now you got to die before you ever get a resurrection. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> now you say, and I'm raised up together with him. And I'm alive together with him. And I'm seated with him in a heavenly realm. My goodness, when you begin, when that becomes a reality to your soul, you live in a whole other dimension. Your disposition results in a dimension. That's why Peter said, if your disposition is giving yourself to this glory and to this excellence of character and adding to your faith excellence of character and excellence of character, all these wonderful things of godliness and all these virtues of heaven, he said, then an entrance shall be ministered into you into the everlasting kingdom. I got a, I've had an entrance ministered to me. I've tasted of the power of the world to come. Ooh. 
Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Well, that's the resurrection life. I tasted of resurrection life, of resurrection power, of the glory of heaven that has come, touched my soul, changed my attitudes, changed my appetites, changed my desires, put within inside of me a great hunger to please God, to do everything that, he, that would, would, would bring him joy and happiness, to give myself completely over to doing the will of the Father. I've got a witness of the Holy Spirit. I love everything that's holy. And that's the way you can how can you, how can, in other words, a witness of the Holy Spirit is he's telling, he's declaring that you agree with him. Hallelujah. The spirit of holiness is declaring that I agree with him. Hallelujah. And it's on the inside of me. I agree with you. I hate evil, Lord. I love righteousness. Hallelujah. If you don't hate evil tonight, God in his, he, the Father doesn't condemn you. He calls you to salvation. Isn't that beautiful? He doesn't say, yo, rotten rascal, get out of here. He doesn't say it. He doesn't say it. He said, just like he said to the woman at the well who had been married five times and was living with a man that wasn't her husband, he said, I got a gift for you. Isn't that great? I got a gift. It will cause you never to thirst for the things of this world ever again. You won't ever be thirsty no more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll give you a job. I'm going to put, put an artesian from heaven right on the inside of you. And that artesian from heaven is going to turn into a river. Rivers. Amen. It's amazing to me. I think it's a revival and a breakthrough. People got a squirt gun anointing. You know what I'm saying? It just looks like little squirts coming out. At least bring a super soaker with you to church. It might only last you two minutes, but praise God, somebody will get something. Father is giving us a wellspring. He's giving us continual flow. I love artesian wells. I love to, I love to go up to artesian wells and, and measure their water flow and you know, I mean, artesian wells can get them set up right as the tastiest water on the earth. And they, they're just such amazement to me because they never slow up. They, is, if nothing changes about the way that the water is coming out, it continually flows exactly at the same flow rate. It's 24 hours a day, three, same temperature, everything, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 365 days a year, uh, just a continual flow. Then you get in there and you start digging around. You open that thing up, you know, telling what's going to happen. Amen. You might create a whole new river on the face of the earth. Some of those artesian wells. There's a person down the road from us. He got an artesian that puts, it puts out 7,000 gallons a minute. That is such an amazing flow of water. That is such a volume of water. Wow. Powerful, explosive water. That's going on the inside of me all the time, right out of heaven. And, and the reason it is, because I say it. I prophesy over it. I confess it with my mouth. For with a confession, your, with your conf your, the confession of your mouth, it's made unto salvation. With your heart, you believe. See, if you confess with your mouth, where is the word of God? Where is the salvation? Where is the work of divine grace? Where is the righteousness which is by faith? Where is it that you begin to believe God when he describes to you things that are impossible? He described things for Abraham that were just impossible. It was beyond all. It was just the wildest thing. And Abraham believed God. Even though it was just wild and out there and wild. There's no way I could do that in a million years. But, God, but Abraham believed God and God counted it to him for righteousness. Hallelujah. There's a righteousness, hallelujah, that is by faith. And now we're living in a faith, a faith of the new birth, the faith of the miracle change, the faith of salvation. You can't define salvation without being born of the Spirit. You can't define salvation without a new heart, new spirit. You can't define the, uh, the righteousness of faith, but without this wonderful washing of the water, regeneration, renewing of the Holy Ghost. You can't define, I mean, people just want to try to, to, to take words from the Bible and misapply them all the time. Say, well, it's just by faith, as though it's some blind thing that has no evidence or has no clear direction or, 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 or characteristics associated with it. Nothing could be further from the truth. Nothing could be further from the truth. So I want you to look here with me. And, and, um, hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3, verse 16. As soon as I was in Colossians chapter 3, we already, we already went there, right? If you then be risen with Christ, if you're risen with Christ, you know what you're going to do? You're going to set your affections. Your affect, where are your affections? 
I had the Lord, I had the Holy Spirit praying through, a, a praying a word of faith through me. I'm not going to share it right now. You'll have to wait to see what's going to happen. But on the way to church, I had the word of the Lord praying through me. A word of faith that I have never prayed. And it's powerful, man. It's, it's life shaking. It's earth shaking. It's just, my dear friend John just got uh, his visa into Cuba to go over to Cuba, start getting the crusade set up there in Havana. Come on now. But I'm, that's awesome, John. I'm just, we're just rejoicing with you, man. I'm just so, I'm so excited what God's going to do in this crusade. It's going to be over the top and nothing going to slow it down. Praise God for Obama. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise God for Obama gone ahead and made an agreement with the Cubans. <laughs> Hallelujah. Open up the door to Cuba. Praise God. Hallelujah. He betrayed all the conservatives. Hallelujah. <laughs> So now we go in there and preach the gospel. We got a whole different schedule. And listen, God's doing more things than you can realize. You can understand, you can understand that Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, Lord Lord's right now, nothing, nothing twitches unless he gives it permission. Nothing moves unless he allows it. Hallelujah. He's head of all principality and power, might, and dominion, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. And he's given him the head to be the head over the church which is the fullness of him that fills all things. That's me and you. You need to get prophesying to yourself. You need to get declaring the word to yourself. You need to get a heavenly identity. I'm telling you right now, I, I, one of the greatest things I was so blessed by, the Lord just one day, uh, Ruth Anna, she just walked into a, one of the youth meetings and she just got a word of wisdom from heaven. She said, I want you to sit down and I want you to write who you are. I want you to tell me who you are. And what's happened is when that gets as surprised as you and you're not ready, watch out. You might be describing, I mean, and if you're the living epistle and what you get Vinny's writing, what is that going to look like? Is that a false gospel? What is that, huh? I mean, come on, dear people. You're going to have to start getting a whole new perspective of what's real and what you want and what you desire. And it needs to be conformed to the image of the Son. You need to get a witness of the Spirit that you have the Father's will being expressed to your life, that you have His wants and His desires being expressed to your life. Watch out, because the world around you is a prison. It will imprison you, and it will, you will be a puppet on its string until you die. Don't do that. Don't allow it. Not when God has this great thing for you. Hallelujah. My affection is on things above. Hallelujah. 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 Are your affections on things above? Yes, they are. Where, 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 where at? Where Christ is seated at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. Well, what, what's going on there? What's going on there? That's where all the power and the divine and, and glory flows. That's why, this, you know, if you look and understand that verse of Scripture from the perspective of Ephesians chapter 1, where Paul said, I pray that you will receive the spirit of wisdom and revelation and knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding may be open, so that you can under, realize the inheritance that, that God has in you. He's got an inheritance in you. Isn't that amazing to even think of that? Huh? And, and that you would understand exceeding riches of his power that is given to you and me when he raised Christ from the dead and set him at his own right hand. That's what's going on in the right hand. That's why our affections need to be there at the right hand. When God, was, when God exalted Jesus Christ at his own right hand and glorified him, he poured forth that which you see and hear. He poured forth the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. My spirit shall come upon all flesh and you shall all prophesy. He, he poured forth the Holy Ghost with the day. He said, if you drink out of your belly shall come rivers of living water. This make ye of the Holy Ghost. Because he said, as surely as I live, I tell you, this whole earth will be filled with my glory. And now his glory is now filling the earth through you and me so that his knowledge will cover the earth as the water covers the sea. Yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. And all that was Bible. <laughs> Hallelujah. How could I say that? was no guesswork. That was true prophecy. That was accurate, accurate prophecy. Huh? I mean, when you talk about Peter, he's telling there in 2 Peter chapter 1 how he was there in the mount when he saw the glory and he saw the excellency of the glory and he heard this, my beloved son, whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. He said, we have a more sure word of prophecy. 
My goodness, he heard the sound of the audible voice of Father God talking about his only begotten son. Said, you got a more certain word of prophecy. Where until you do well, if you take heed, as unto a light shining in a dark place. Somebody said, why can't I take a little bit of this and a little bit of that and mix it together? Because I'm going to tell you right now, as soon as you take one fraction of a lie and put it with a hole of the truth, that hole of the truth is now a lie. I mean, we're going to have to understand there's only one light unto our path. There's only one way for us to know what's good and what's evil, what's right and what's wrong, what's true, what's a lie. It's his word. It's a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, man doesn't live by bread alone. He lives by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've got my affections at the right hand. That's where the glory flow is. That's where communion is. He's brought me in. He, see, in the Old Testament, to be anointed, to be rubbed with the oil of anointing, okay? The oil of separation, the oil of sanctification, which we ultimately then derive the word of the anointing, of that which represents the deliverance of the Father. It wasn't about a display of power. It was about being separated, given the ability to walk in holiness, to be separated to holiness. The anointing was all about being made holy. Now, God has given us an, us an anointing that we may know Him. Huh? And that anointing teaches us all things. And what does it teach us? To dwell in Him. See, He's given us an anointing to be one with Him, to be separated unto Him, to dwell with Him. He opens up His arms and said, Come, abide in Me. Come, dwell in Me. He calls everybody. He says, he says Come unto Me. He's the, the cry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it a, why, why, why don't we just go ahead and respond? Because you're going to have to lay yourself aside. You're going to have to lay your sorrow aside. You're going to have to lay your sign aside. You're going to have to lay ugliness aside. You're going to have to lay your own will aside, your own wants, your own desires aside. All, they is, all they're going to do for you is get you in trouble and bring more problems into your life anyway. So why not get rid of them now? Why not get enough wisdom and insight to realize that your way is not the right way and that your thoughts aren't going to get it done? that you're going to be wrong 100% of the time. You know, when you knew that, if you know that, right, you know, hey, wait, you know what, I, I've got it. I understand my weakness. I'm going to be wrong 100% of the time. So I want to go to a place where I can get the right answers. Hallelujah. <laughs> then you're not going to make any more mistakes. But what, what ignorance is it to know you're going to be wrong 100% of the time and still go ahead and make your own decisions for yourself? I mean, come on, people, let's just stop it right now. Father's given us the knowledge of the holy. He's given us the insight from above. Hallelujah. Our, we are dead. See, we, were de we are dead. You read that right there in Colossians because I'm trying to get to verse 16, but I'm still up in verse 3. See, we are dead. Praise yeah. God. How did I get dead? I got dead when I got regenerated. I got dead when I got born again. I got dead when I got into the move of the miracle of Christ Jesus where he died for my sins and I died together with him. I'm crucified with Christ, buried by, with him by baptism into his death. That spells dead. Yeah. Hallelujah. I no longer live. It's Christ now who lives. For we are dead. We no longer live. We are dead and our lives are hid with God in Christ Jesus. So that when Christ, who is our life, huh, when he shall appear, where are we going to appear? With him. With him. With him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Where at? Where at? In glory. Ha, 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 ha. Hell, I'm staying in the glory. I don't know about you. I'm going to stay in the glory. Because here's all spiritual blessings. Why would I buy into some cheap heresy, lies, and doctrines of men and devils at the expense of giving up my glory? Buy into some lie from hell so I can condone death and filth. And twisted imaginations. I'd rather walk in the mind of Christ. I'd rather be clothed with Christ Jesus. And make no provision for the flesh. To fulfill its lust. Because everyone who walks in the spirit. Does not fulfill the lust of the flesh. And if you walk in the spirit. Then you are a son of God. And if you don't. Then you're not. And that's just what God says. And it's time somebody starts listening to what Father has to say instead of a bunch of pablon of men's speech and understanding. I wanted to say Babylon. Just get the Word of God. If there's anything God's people need in these last days, it's the discerning of spirits. If there's anything God's people need to do is to give themselves to a healthy appetite of reading the Word. 
You can easily read the Bible, Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21, four times a year easily. Just an hour a day with an average e reading speed. That's reading the whole of the Bible in 90 days. Most of you in here right now are at day 63. And you're in about Ezekiel chapter 37, 38. And you're going to be done just a few more days. It's time to start again. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to it. I got a new strategy. I've always got these new strategies. I'm always doing these kinds of things. That's where this came from right here. If you've never spent any time reading my book on the sequential events of Jesus Christ, chronological description of the four Gospels, I want you to do it. I'm giving you that. I want you to do it. And you spend time studying the Word of God. All it is is the Gospels put together. It's just knitted together. Hallelujah. Just, just, you get filled up. You get strengthened. You get built up. All of a sudden, somebody starts saying something. You go, wait a minute. That don't sound right. It don't sound right. It, what I'm saying doesn't sound right if you're just living in the school of men. If all you've ever heard is a bunch of preacher preaching, all you've heard is the doctrines of men, I don't sound right. But you get over in the doctrines of God, and all the doctrines of men won't sound right anymore. Wait a minute. You've been bathing in the Word of God. You've been getting washed in the water of the Word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You all scrubbed up from the water of the Word right now. Somebody come and slime you, contaminate you with some false doctrine. Uh, you, you won't, you won't, you'll keep your heart with all diligence, for out of your heart proceeds the issues of life. The word, the word of faith is in your, in your mouth and in your heart. Huh? Did you know that out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks? Hallelujah. That's why God gave us a pure heart. Blessed are the pure in heart. Hallelujah. They will see God. Amen. The same result of being born of God. And the only way you get a pure heart is to be born of God. Until you get, are born of God, you got a wicked heart and a wicked imagination. Out of it proceeds adulteries, fornications, and every other evil thing. That's the only flow you've got. It's just iniquity and sin. But God in his loving kindness came to change our hearts so that we could agree with him. He came yeah. to give us a new nature so we could be one. Yeah. He, Jesus came, made a way so that we could have the same glory that he has. And I'm telling you, and he's given us by his divine power everything that pertains to his life and to his godliness so we can do it. So that we're without excuse because he's called us to glory and virtue. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 and you're not going to get around it. Amen. And there's no arguments against it. Let me hear them, please. I was talking to, I was, I was in school, you know, I was in undergraduate school, and I was talking to a theologian who was one of the people, one of the theologians who, who uh, did the NIV translation. And, and I, I, as I was talking with him and just expressing these things, some of these types of things to him, he said, no, Mark, he said, you're right. I totally agree with you from a biblical sense. You are correct. It's not our experience nor our creed. I said, away with your creed. Away with experience. What are you trying to tell me, men? I'm not reading your Bible. You translated. Because it's been contaminated with you. I want somebody who reverenced the Word of God to translate for me. I huh, couldn't find too many, so I just decided <laughs> I'd learn the languages and I'd translate. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So I said, why are you translated by the Bible? Because too many of the wrong type are. <laughs> Amen. You hear me say that again? Because too many of the wrong, wrong, wrong type are doing it. Now somebody else needs to get into the mix. Amen. Hallelujah. You want a new translation? We'll give you one. <laughs> Hallelujah. We pray God, Jesus, holy name. It sounds just like the old one. Amen. And it will. <laughs> Just won't have the, have the thou's and the these and the Easter's. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. He, he watches over his word to perform it. His word's very sacred to him. His word has not really taken on the, the sacredness to us as it should because we're still lost in the wor world of our own words. We're still wa lost in the world of our own ideas and our own imagination. we got to recognize that it's time for us to move out of imagination and that he's given to us the weapons of our warfare that are not carnal but are mighty through him. It's God power. It's divine power so we can move out of imagination into the knowledge of Christ and the obedience of Christ Jesus. It's a willful thing. You've got to participate. You've got to get out of your rational, logical thinking because God wants to show you a whole new realm of doing things 
Hallelujah. He wants to show you how to move from trust in the arm of flesh over into trust in him absolutely and solely. He wants, to, he wants to move you out of the camp of the sorrow and the downcast over into the realms of the glorious outpouring and the majestic splendor of those who are filled with his life forevermore. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. This is true stuff. This is true. This is the word, this is the word of God. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and skip from uh, down the chapter here, get verse 16. <clears throat> because here's the scripture here is hallelujah. Oh, here it is. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Yes. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Hallelujah. You got a treasure in this earthen vessel that the excellency of the glory and the power may be of God. Amen. The treasure. What's the treasure? Holy Ghost. Yes. Treasure. Jesus in me. Treasure. Is Jesus in you? Yes. I said to some people, and I uh, walked into a Bible school, and I said to some people, I said, is your name written in the land's book of life? And they said, God knows. I said, you better know, because if you don't know, it's not. <laughs> they had been being taught some wrong, crazy ideas and doctrines. So I had, to, I had to break out the word of life. Amen. And I show them in print. Amen. Hallelujah. You can know that you've been born again. You can know that your life has been changed. You can know that you have a treasure on the inside of you. You can feel. I mean, you can't feel a river. You, what's wrong with you? You can't feel a river. <laughs> you can't feel the explosive movings of the power of God on the inside of you. My goodness, it's a wonderful thing when you begin to understand the realms of, of, of the riches of heaven that God has placed within us. So if you're going to let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, I'll just, just think about this for just a minute. Number one, the first and foremost thing is the Father just brings us in without any knowledge. He just brings us in with a response to the good news, a simple gospel message. He gives us a miracle transformation and the capacity to know him. And a capacity to understand spiritual things. Because the carnal man can't, it's all these things of the spirit be foolishness to him. It is, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to be smart. And you don't have to be stupid either. But, you know, just anybody, anyone, anywhere that responds. Because, look, the grace of God. Listen to this. The grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to just the elect. Come on, go ahead. Come on, go ahead. No, 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 no. Let me say it like people believe it. <laughs> That's don't believe. Don't say it like the Word of God says it, for heaven's sake. We we'll all get confused. <laughs> the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Uh, God, the Holy Spirit, He's poured out a Spirit upon all flesh. When I start talking to somebody about the Lord Jesus, I know the Holy Ghost is right there. He's being, he's pour, he's being poured out on them. They can act like they don't feel nothing. I know better. I know what's really going on. I know God's w working on them, tugging at their heart, pleading with them. I know Jesus standing at the door of the heart, knocking, saying, just open up in there. Right now, I said, open up. Unlock the door. It's the, it's the latch to your left. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> woo -hoo! My, the grace of God. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw the elect unto me. I'll draw those who I've elected. I'll draw those few that are appointed unto life. And the rest are just going to, I'm going to destroy them. No. Uh, he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. God is long-suffering, not willing that the elect perish huh just a couple of few the chosen huh those that he appointed no god is long suffering not willing that any in whosoever will call upon the name of the lord hallelujah god wills that all men be saved Hallelujah. My goodness, when you start moving in faith, you'll have faith for all men to be saved. You start moving in faith, you're not on your own trying to persuade somebody of some doctrinal idea that you've got some religious, religious persuasion. All of a sudden, you now partners with God. You are now his spokesman, and you've got all the power and the glory of heaven working with you on whoever it is you're talking to, and it's an entirely different dynamic. 
And you're not going to go years without having a fruit in the kingdom. You No. No, sir. You don't have, you don't have fruit. Amen. God wants, you in, God wants you to bring people to Jesus. Hallelujah. Ruth, is, Ruth has always been the soul winner, you know, the exemplified soul winner in our, in our family. She's always bringing people to Jesus. I mean, it's not to say that the rest of our, our family doesn't bring people to Jesus. And are, you know, it just, she, she just, is, she's pretty intense, <laughs> if you haven't noticed. Huh? She, my wife calls her Mark in a, in a dress. <laughs> she's intense. I'll let up. It's a faith round, though. It really is. It's a faith round. When you know you're moving with God, God's moving with you. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to be liberated from the fear of men. It's a wonderful thing to be liberated from legalism, from, from religious ritual. It's a wonderful thing to step into a partnership. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody said, oh, man, you must be, it must be terrible for you. You, you, I, what, you preach like 10 hours on Sunday, don't you? <laughs> No, I'll tell you right now, it's, it's glory divine. It's, it's glory divine. Ho, she pate is she a to ya. And I'm telling you, when you sit, listening to the word of God going forth, you're being changed. You're being transformed. He, listen, his word will work in you effectually. His word will work effectually in you that believe. It will, uh, it will produce within your life. As then you begin to acknowledge every good thing that is within you, then your faith will be what? Effectual. And, and I, of course, you know, most of you know the two verses of the Scripture that I just quoted. And I, I'll give you the last one, Philemon 1.7. First, the, 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 the uh, previous one, you're going to have to figure it out for yourself. It's, anybody going to win the prize here? Huh? Huh? Thank you. His word. His, listen to me. His words, not John 6, 63 or 53. His word works effectually in them that believe. I'll give you a guess. It's Thessalonians. And it's not the two. But okay, I want you to get the word in you. It's my point. I just wanted to stop and make a point. How can, the, how can the word of Christ dwell in you richly if you don't know it? You've been born of the word. You've been begotten of the word. Amen. He's put his word on the inside of us. He's written upon the tables of our heart and on our mind. But we're going to have to give ourselves to the word. Hallelujah. And, and I, I'm going to tell you right now, people, one of the best things you can do is just stop praying your prayers and start praying the word. Hallelujah. Just start saying, thank you, Lord God, that my faith will be effectual because I'm going to acknowledge every good thing in me. Oh, let, the, let, the, let, the, let your faith be effectual by the acknowledgement of how everything that is in you is evil. Let me just go try to get this. Jeremy said, if I get this right according to modern doctrine. Huh? Let your faith be effectual by the acknowledgement of, oh, wicked man that I am, who should deliver me from the body of sin. <laughs> That, that, huh? <laughs> it's no longer me, but sin that dwelleth in me. And now your face effectual, because now you're acknowledging that sin dwelleth in you. Maybe you don't even understand. Paul, and it made, Paul made it very clear in Romans chapter 7. He wanted to stop and take, talk, take a break and talk about what it was like under the law. He made it very clear in his introductory remarks in Romans chapter 7. He's going to take a break and he's going to talk to you about in the historical... A present. He's going to talk to you about what it was like living under the law. Hallelujah. That he, he, he both said in bank a day. You cannot make it, the, the idea of modern theology to try to hook Romans chapter 7 up with the Christian, Reverend Romans chapter 7 up with Paul's divine experience in the Spirit. It won't work. The, it won't work. It is a one, it flies with, with contradictions right, left, and center. Let, but, but if you'll let the Word of God be effectual, in you his word the word of god works effectually or works mightily in them that believe huh are you with me first thessalonians 2 13 hallelujah 
Hallelujah. Because now I can begin to prophesy over myself. I can say, Father, I just want to thank you that your word, oh God, is working mightily in me because I believe it. it. Your word has transformed me. Hallelujah. Sons have got to maturity. Hallelujah. I am said I am, so I am. You begin to let the word of God be in your heart and in your mouth. I don't go off of feelings. I, 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 I get feelings off of me. Huh? And I tell sorrow to flee. I tell sadness to flee. I tell condemnation and take a hike. I, you know, I'm, I'm, woke, I'm awakened in the night and, and, and have a sense of fear and, and, and foreboding kind of thing and feel like, you know, something's wrong. You know what I do? I kick that thing right out the room. I go, oh, Holy Ghost, is that you? He don't talk that way. <laughs> I can, somebody calls me up on the phone. I can tell whether it's Kate or Brittany. Praise God. <laughs> I can tell whether it's Ruthanna or Elizabeth. Just, huh? It's hard sometimes because sometimes Ruthanna, Elizabeth, and Anne sound the same. It's a genetic thing. <laughs> and I've got to listen carefully. I can tell the difference between the voice of Satan and the voice of God, the influences of darkness and the influences of divine light. Why? Because I live in the light. If I didn't, if I lived in both worlds, I'd be confused. If I didn't live over here in the truth, I would not be able to be sensitive and discerning of the lie. I am sensitive to the things of God because I've given myself over to holy emotions. That's why if there's the wrong thing <clears throat> on the radio, or on the television, I'll start feeling the same way the Holy Ghost feels about it, and I'll turn it off. I'm not going to have any communion with it. I'm, I'm not, I'm, listen, there's, there's a lot of things going on that Satan uses in a subtle, very subtle way to seed people for unholy, th unholy thoughts that will ultimately lead to unholy actions. You don't want that. You want the Word of God to dwell in you richly. Jesus says, come abide in me. He said, I am the vine, you are the branches. He said, let, he said, if you abide in me and my word abides in you, then you will ask what you will. And it will be given. You want the word of God abiding in you. It's a, it's a very important part of your life. You want the word of God coming out of your mouth. You can't afford to speak curses over yourself. It's a terrible thing. You don't need a witch doctor to curse you. Somebody said, <laughs> somebody said, hey, aren't you concerned about all those witch doctors? I said, that ain't nothing, man. You ought to be in the church in America. Weren't you concerned about being right next to the goddess Shiva? They've been having uh, human sacrifices going on to that idol for 3,000 years. Didn't even feel it. Didn't even notice. Didn't even go by and visit. Uh, forgot all about it. I was caught up in glory land. All of them left the temple, came over where we were at, and jammed out the national stadium in Kathmandu. Praise God. They, they did, didn't they? They come plugged on in. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Don't curse yourself. You don't need a witch. Oh, I think a witch doctor cursed me. Hey, listen, you know, don't worry about the witch doctor. I've been listening to you lately. You've been doing a good job on your own. <laughs> Talking about the old me's and the woe me's and the bad and the, uh, 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 I don't even want to talk about it. You need to start declaring the word of God over your life. You need to start decreeing a thing. You, need to start, you want to get into the gift of faith. You want to get into the moving of faith. You want to get into a place where you can ask what you will and Papa will do it because that's what he's purposed. That's what he called and elected you to do. He, you, didn't, you didn't choose him. He chose you. He ordained you to, so, so that you had bring forth fruit. And this is the fruit he wants you to bring forth. To whatever you ask, he'll do it. My goodness, then quit cursing yourself and start blessing yourself with the Word of God. Start telling yourself about who you are in Christ Jesus. Go start telling yourself about all the great things God's doing in you and through you now and throughout the ages to come. I mean, God, just start reminding yourself of how you see it in heavenly places. We've been in some tough spots, you know, in our life. We've been in, we've been in some places where death was certain. It was certain death for us. On the foreign field, I've, I've felt like I was in places of certain death in churches in America. But I'm telling you, <laughs> I never got the dry mouth, dry mouth, where it's all of a sudden you feel the press of it. I, ne I didn't get a dry mouth when, they, when, the, uh, when the secret service men of uh, Egypt were trying to tip the taxi car over that I was in. I was full of bold of faith. But I've gotten dry mouth preaching to people in church. Because of the oppression. Oppression. 
in the United States of America, in the churches of the Lord Jesus Christ. I never felt that out on the street corner, ministering downtown San Diego or anywhere else. Huh? I'm telling you, we've been, at, we've been in some difficult spots, but here's what I've found every time. You know what I do? I'll just sit down and I'll start encouraging myself in the Lord. I'll start talking about the miracle of how I got here, the miracle of all the things that God has done for me. I'll start talking about how faithful he is. And that's just what I do. It doesn't matter what's up. If it's a big thing or a small thing. Even when I got that dry mouth one time, I was just saying, I know you're with me, Father. I mean, I can tell you right now that I got a whole bunch of people against me. You know why? Because I must be I was being persecuted for righteousness sake. Because I was telling those people that I was talking to that they need to get right with Jesus. That they were wrong. And no crowd of people that you're a stranger to wants you to tell them that they are wrong. Who do you think you are? You don't know me. No, but God who's speaking through me knows me. Knows you, brother. <laughs> He's speaking through me. He knows you. And I didn't come giving you, come to you with words of wisdom, which means... Uh, w words which men's wisdom teaches. I came by the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power to tell you what, your, what condition your condition is in. Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped in to tell you. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> what condition your condition is in. <laughs> uh, most people here aren't old enough to know what I just said. But nonetheless, that's okay. We don't care about that anyways. Huh? Hallelujah. I'm sorry if I stirred up any remembrances of former things. <laughs> I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. But I want to just say, you, you need to let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. What's going to happen when you let the word of Christ dwell in you richly? What are you going to do? You're going to admonish yourself. What's that? Build yourself up. Huh? You're going to strengthen yourself. You're going to encourage yourself. You're admonishing you. Uh, let me tell you, Mark, who you are in God. Hey, Let me just quote some scripture here. You may go, I got the, God has put his word in my mouth, and I want to declare to you the word of faith. <laughs> it's in my heart. It's a bubble up. I want to describe to you what God made you in Christ Jesus and what your purpose is, how that he'll never leave you or forsake you, how he's ordained you to bring forth. I just go on and on and on. Father has called you and I to get out of the curses and into the blessing. You quit cursing yourself and more than likely you're going to quit cursing everybody else too. Huh? Oh, so and so. Don't you know? So and so. They did. What did they do? Something to you, right? Because you wouldn't be so earnest if it was to get somebody else. You'd probably be greedy with them. Yeah, I tell you. Yeah, I know. Uh, they are that way. Yeah, you just got to have mercy. <laughs> Jesus help us. Quit cursing. Start blessing. God's one is one father. People said, How do I get into the spiritual blessings? Start blessing. <laughs> How do I get to enjoy the flow of heaven? Get over here into the word of God. Go over here in the word of life. If you don't believe the gospel, you're never going to be transformed. You're never going to receive the miracle results of those things which God has said. If you believe a lie, what's going to happen to you? You'd be damned. Huh? Who wants that? That's the worst kind of cursing you can. I'm not going to sit around and damn myself. <laughs> encouraging myself. Just, just agreeing with myself about some lie that Satan's telling about me. Somebody said to me one time, they said, you really think you're special, don't you? I said, I absolutely do. How do you feel about yourself? <laughs> uh, I am very special. Don't you know what God made me? Don't you know who I am? I'm a co-inheritor with Jesus Christ. I'm an heir of God. I'm his ambassador. I've been anointed of him to represent him to humanity. Go everywhere and proclaim his good news. I'm, I got such a place with God that whatever I ask him, he'll do it. I got influence. Just encourage yourself. Admonish yourself. How? How are you going to admonish yourself? Psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing, making melody. See, having the word of God dwell in you richly is hooked up right there with Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 18. It says, be filled with the Spirit. Right there, being filled with the Spirit. It, the feeling being filled with the Spirit is going to be in, in direct proportion and in, in direct agreement with the word of Christ dwelling in you. If you're not letting the word of Christ dwell in, it, dwell in you, you're not going to be filled with the Spirit. It ain't going to happen because you're going to be leave a light and you're going to have the door slammed on you. You won't know how to touch that realm of glory. 
You come into this church for the purpose of learning how to be touched by heaven. And after a while, after a while, you get touched by heaven enough, then you'll be able to touch heaven at any time. You just reach out and you'll touch heaven. And heaven be made manifest. You change the atmosphere of people. You change the atmosphere for your life and the people that are around your life. My, my wife sets an atmosphere every morning in the house. She does, doesn't she? She's in there. She's a bright sun shining, always laughing, big smile on her face, so happy. She, she hugs us like she hasn't seen us for years because <laughs> we just woke up. That's Mama. That's Ann. That's who she is. She's so full of love and life. It is beautiful to live in that. You know, people talk about, oh, my, Charles Finney would go into a town and, and people come under Holy Ghost conviction because he brought an atmosphere with them. It's true. God wants to bring an atmosphere with you, but you have to start creating an atmosphere for you before there's going to be an atmosphere through you. You sit around in dark shadows. Remember that? Dark shadows. Woo. Dark shadows. Sit around in dark shadows. I'm on the, I'm on a roll here tonight. Retro. <laughs> oh, come into the light. Come into the light of his word. Come minister to the light, to the lamp of his word, to the lamp of his spirit. My goodness, to start communing with your soul, feeding yourself with the word of God. Paul said, or rather John said, I write unto young men because the word of God abides in you. And you have defeated Satan at every point. You're not going to do it if you don't have this word abiding in you. And when his word abides in you, it's going to be in your mouth. It's in your heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Jesus said, how, he said to the religious people, how can you escape the damnation of hell? For out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. That's actually the context they used it. And it because their mouth was just speaking curses and lies. It wasn't the word of God. It was their own religious spin on things. Huh? Oh, basate ganea shakopatane. I'm talking to you here tonight. I'm you sitting here underneath the word of God here tonight. I pray it's weighty on you. Hallelujah. I pray you're getting a whole bunch of manna. Just stuffing yourself with manna. Just stop. Just jaws just stuffed full of manna like you're not going to get another bite to eat for the next month. <laughs> so paya, long brusha. I hope pray in Jesus night. In Jesus name, you eat His word tonight, and it'll be sweet in your mouth, and it'll be good in your belly. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Ah, hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. It's not going to be sour in your belly because you're not going to have to deliver it to a rebellious people. God's not having. I'm not delivering a word of God to a rebellious people. I'm delivering a word of God to a tried people in this place. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, Papa's got revival on the agenda. God's got an awakening on the schedule. <laughs> There's a bunch of people who've never seen the power and the glory of God. And, there, and Father has now set, set it up. So those who know the Lord, those who are strong, I'm strong. How am I strong? Because I got the word of God abiding me. I'm strong. Because I speak the word of God over myself. I believe the word of God. I don't believe all the lies going through the atmosphere. All the winds and doctrines and, uh, 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 of men. All the things of my ideas and other people's ideas. I live under the word of God. I'm strong. And those who are strong this year in 2015 are going to do exploits. Because these are the last days. These are the last days. You're not doing exploits if you're weak. About time the weak say I'm strong. Get the word of God in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, shake kata man de prataya. Lord astora mengalisha perataya. Halamosepeno. Ha ha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, living God. Thank you, Lord. Let me let me see that. Let me see just this. You're, are you at Colossians chapter? Oh, good. Here, let me have that just a minute. Verse right there. Verse seventeen. Hallelujah. And whatever you do, whatever you do, what I, whatever you say, whatever you do, whatever action, whatever activity of your life, do it all in the name of the Lord Je Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father by Him. And then we're not going to get in the next part. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
She caught him on the teatana. I won't be able to go off track if I look at that. <laughs> Jesus. The Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for the ministry of the word. He sent his word and he healed us. He sent his word. He sent the logos, which is the revelation, the definition, the explanation, and the proclamation of who God is. He sent the word, Christ Jesus, and redeemed us. Hallelujah. The word. Mambo said, the living word. Who gave us his flesh to eat, for his flesh is meat indeed. He gave us his blood to drink, for his blood is drink indeed. Hallelujah. Unless you eat his flesh and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Hallelujah. But if you eat his flesh and drink his blood, you have eternal life. He that eats his flesh and drinks his blood dwells in him. Hallelujah. Because that's what it all about all is about. You know, I would <clears throat> I wanted to have communion with you because I haven't had communion with the church here this year. We had communion on New Year's uh, Eve service to the church plant in Bly. And I want to have communion with you. And we, the things just weren't set up, weren't ready here tonight. And they're supposed to always be set up and they're supposed to be always be ready. But nonetheless, you know, for me, it's a very, communion is a very sacred, sacred, sacred thing. You know, it's holy, holy, holy. And it's all about, it testifies about our fellowship with him. It, testi it testifies about our oneness with him. Huh? It testifies about our oneness with one another. You can't allow division. You can't allow separation. You can't allow offense. You can't allow problems in your life. If you do, all, all, it's just going gonna, gonna to get you sideways. You're going to have to let the word of God rule over you. Jesus, has, he's king of kings and he wants to rule you. He wants to rule you the word of life. You know, he's got a, wor he's got a name, you know. He's got a name. That, his, that he has. His name is the Word of God. Did you know that? In the beginning was the Word. And did you know the Revelation, the book of Revelation? He shall also once again be called by that name, the Word. And the Word, word is going to come and rule us with a rod of iron. He's going to come and rule over humanity with a rod of iron. And he's going to smash things. He's going to smash them. And it's about time you start smashing stuff too. You, start, you need to start smashing unholy thoughts. You need to start smashing lies and intimidation. You need to start, start smashing wrong thinking. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Well, I just want you to lift your hands towards heaven here. Let the anointing of the Holy Ghost touch you. Let the presence of Jesus fill you. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that brings rivers out of our innermost yeah. being. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing of the Holy Spirit that brings rivers out of our innermost being. Hallelujah. I was so blessed. Walter said, hey, man, he comes up to me. He said, I just want to let you know I was in the meeting. He said, I got a, such an impartation. He said, I got up the next time I got up to preach. He said, I was laughing and crying. I said, I didn't know whether I was coming or going, whether I was in heaven or on earth. I said, isn't it wonderful, man? Just one touch, just one touch, just one touch. You don't even know you got touched. Just one touch, huh? You're just in the place. You're just hungry. He came, he's a preacher, a missionary, came, stood in line. He came, stood in line. Hallelujah. Did you know Jesus came, stood in line? Yeah, he came, stood in line in John's ministry. John couldn't hold a candle to his ministry. He didn't even, John couldn't even loose the, the sandal straps of his ministry. <laughs> but he came to his ministry. Hallelujah. 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 Tonight. 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 Tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight in Jesus' name. I want you to receive boldness. I want you to receive boldness and confidence to be able to stand before the presence of the living God. I want you to receive boldness and confidence and assurance to be able to rise up in authority <clears throat> to deal with lying powers of darkness with authority. You don't have to cower behind anything. You don't have to be uncertain about anything. You can rise up in faith and authority by the Word of God and execute the will of the Father. Hallelujah. I'm telling you right now, I am in the name of Jesus Christ. I've taken charge of this thing tonight to destroy condemnation, to destroy browbeaten condemnation and lying spirits from off of people in this place. It's just Satan swept against you to keep you from walking in the authority of faith, in the authority of the Word, and in the authority of the Spirit. 
Tonight, we want you to receive from heaven right there in the inner being, right there in your inner man. Hallelujah. Oh, I want you to stand with me. Just change your position here. Just stand with me. Just keep your hands lifted towards heaven. We're just waiting on the Lord here. Just when you hear the Spirit of the Lord speak. I want to watch the power of God and fire of God fall upon you tonight. Uh, I want you to receive that which you need from heaven. Some gay you stay in a mosque today. I'm bolosu tiki ya na manda say. Bronda ye say tiki shipona. Lena manda sete retisi. Hallelujah. Oh kina sate ingalaya. I want you to just reach out towards heaven. I want you to touch God because Father's here to meet your need. I want you to reach out towards heaven. I want you to touch God. He's here to fill you up. Hallelujah. He's here to strengthen you. Mamba sateri. He's here to encourage you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Purusuri ninga setu la mongeya takina. Purusuti yena mengila mongesitia. Hallelujah. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, Father, give you understanding in Jesus' name. That from this day forward, you will not live the same. You will not go back to the ditch of complaint. You will not go back to the ditch of, of unbelief. Speaking words that have no knowledge. Words that have no wisdom. But rather, instead, you're going to speak the word of faith. You're going to begin to declare to yourself. You're going to begin to minister to yourself these things. God won't, God won't let you forget. The Holy Ghost will bring these things into your remembrance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brosataranenge. Haramon Jesse Ataya. Hallelujah. Right now, the Lord Jesus is healing someone's collarbone. Hallelujah. Right now, the collarbone is being healed. The collarbone is being healed. It's being, the stre it's being strengthened. It's being strengthened right there in the connective tissue. It's being strengthened. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Ah, there will be no more pain in the collarbone in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. That's you, Daniel. There'll be no, anybody else with collarbone pain, pain in your collarbone. I'm telling you right now, the Lord's healing you. Father doesn't want you to be anything other than the perfection of health. Hallelujah. Everybody can be excited about that. If I start saying about, you know, no. No, I, listen. Listen, listen, I know, you don't understand. If I say, if I say, you start talking, God wants you to be the perfection of things in the Spirit, people are going to get mad. Oh, well, what are you talking about now? Nobody can be perfect. But I start talking about God wants you to be the perfection of health. Everybody's glad. Praise God, health, body, health. I, <laughs> hallelujah. I tell you, it's all good. Father's the one who provides it. He's the one who supplies it. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm just standing here. We're just standing here before the presence of the Lord in expectation that God is going to move by His power with the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. I mean, Father has been ministering by prophecy and by revelation already and by, and by, and by knowledge. But, you know, we want, we want the things of the Spirit to become alive in you. We want you. We, we know that as you sit here underneath the word of God that you're being built up. You're being strengthened. God is giving you a supply. Hallelujah. And it's in you and it's on you. And if you'll allow these things to be activated through your participation with these, this wonderful grace of God, you, no matter where you go, there'll be a, uh, there'll be a work of, 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 of the power of God through your life. The word of God will flow out of your life with rivers. And I'm in expectation that everybody in this place goes everywhere throughout the world preaching the gospel. Hallelujah. Now, you just need, the Lord, wants, the Lord wants you just to have a little bit of participation. Say the word for 2015 is participation. You can't, you can't be a, you cannot be a hearer of the word and not a doer, huh? You can't, I can't come to you say, and say to you, are you going to go? And you say, yeah, but don't go. I, I can't come to you and say, are you going to go ahead and allow, let the word of God dwell in you richly and speak and let the word of God be in your heart and in your mouth and minister to yourself of these things? And you say, yeah, praise God, then don't do it, huh? It'd be better for you to say, I'm not, not going to do it and then go. Because, that, you know, that's the one who did the will of the Lord. The one, I mean, really, come on. I mean, the best way to look at it is to say, yes, and, 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 and yes, I'm going to do it. And you go ahead and you do it. Yes. Hallelujah. And, and, and wives, watch your husbands. Uh, uh, watch them. 
And, and husbands, watch out for your wives. Make sure you guys are accountable to one another. And you don't, you don't sit around and listen to a bunch of doubt and nonsense. Huh? You don't go decree bad things over yourself. Start decreeing good things. I don't believe in decreeing. Well, you decreeing all the time, man. What are you talking about? You just decree in a bunch of bad, earthly, natural, normal stuff. Negative thinking everything's going to burn down, blow up. <laughs> it's time to turn this thing around. Amen. I start decreeing right things. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. David, come on up here. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm going to have, I'm going to have, um, we're going to have uh, two things going on this week besides the Wednesday night meeting. We're going to have, on Friday night, we're going to do one of the final Revelation studies, the book of Revelation. And if you haven't been involved in it, we have it posted on our website. Praise God for those who have given themselves to doing this. But we have all the series in the, in, uh, on, the, on the book of Revelation that we've done over the past few months. And, you, you know, just to be encouraged to go there and, and review those. And you need to understand those things. And then on sa Saturday, we're going to have a sower. It's going to have, which is, which is the school of worship. And I want more, more people to come. I want to teach you how to, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like singing songs. I like worship. I like flow. And I want, and if you, you know, there's some people in here, you know, I've been just praying about you and thinking about you, uh, Jeremy. I mean, you know, I know that you had been giving yourself to playing the piano when you were younger. But now you've stepped into a more of an anointing and more of an authority in God. And I would really like to see you begin to start playing the piano. Just start coming under the anointings. Just start flowing in the things of the Spirit. And I want to help you. I want to show you how to do that. Now, because I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. Because if you're going to serve in any ministry that has any effectiveness, you know what? You've got to be fully submitted. And you can't be all, all you know, easily wounded. And there's a little flower melt and wilt because it got a little hot. Huh? Because it gets hot. Are you with me? You've got to be able to take orders and say, yes, sir. And, you know, stand in the midst of the fire. Okay? And so I want to teach people how to be able to flow in the anointing. I'm teaching people how to come under the anointing. How, somebody said, I want, want to come practice music. I'm not interested in anybody practicing any music. We got something to give. We don't, I, I don't, I'm, I'm not interested in learning. I'm just right now, when it comes to the music and worship, I'm not really interested in, in learning. I'm well established in something. I'm, I'm at this point in time interested in teaching. I'm interested in giving something that I have received from heaven. And so I, I, want, that, I want that to be... I want that to be spread around a bit more. If you've got, any, you've got any desire to understand how to flow in the anointing, how to flow in music, how to flow in worship, then and you, want, you really want, one of the biggest part of it is just really coming under authority. Huh? In, in, you know, we live in a time right now, musicians have become superstars, and there's a bunch of egos around it. My goodness gracious, that's all messed up, man. Huh? The court jest of 400 years ago are now our superstars. We are weird. <laughs> Are you listening to me? <laughs> the court jest of 400 years ago are now our, our demigods. We, it's just one messed up culture. Uh, everybody's been smoking way too much dope. <laughs> That's my problem. Uh, it's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, and we bind that thing in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God that we had the authority to bind it. We're going to get this thing turned right side up. We're going to get this thing turned right side up. And what we're going to be doing, if you're interested in learning sound design and, and, and under, coming to understand sound engineering, you need to come at 5 o'clock because I'm going to start leading a class on sound design, sound engineering. It's the hardest, most difficult dimension of ministry. I mean, the sound controls the place these days. And you got to understand what you're doing and and we want as many people to, 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 to learn as possible. And, you know, I'm going to just start getting real practical with it. Just set up the little, the small units that we have that have six channels and show you how to take feedback out of it and show you how to take buzz out of it and then start graduating you to bigger uh, systems. And Because, man, when you can do that, you can serve in any church on the globe. I mean... I'm telling you, you'd be like a fresh drink of water to a pastor. You walk in and say, hey, I can run that sound for for you. He's going to look at you with these earnest eyes of, of great deep need and, and love and compassion and say, really? 
And then if you do it right, and then of course that's another place of that's another place of intensity. Because because there are hot spots in the house. And you gotta be you're gonna have to understand how to serve the anointing. You have to quit too many people live for themselves. It's all about it's all about Bob. Need, 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 want, 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 want. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just on a roll tonight here. Help us, Jesus. I like that. I like, there, I, I like that movie. Uh, you know, there's a couple of things in there that needs to be edited out. But because it so shows basic, raw human behavior. That's why I like it. I'm just like, can we ever grow out of that mess? Can we ever quit acting like that, looking like that, being like that, and start shining with the glory and the brightness and the beauty and the confidence of the living God? Please, 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 please. This isn't hard stuff. This is easy. Just quit having a bad attitude. You know what I'm saying? Just start having a good attitude. Your disposition will result in a dimension. Your, the, your disposition will result in a dimension in which you live. Hallelujah. We want you to live in a heavenly realm. We want you to live in the miracles that the word of faith produces. Hallelujah. Just turn to somebody right now. Just give them a hug. Just give them a hug. And tell them you're amazed that they're here. Thank you. Hey, we want you to prepare an offering for the Lord. Prepare an offering for the Lord. Worship Him with your tithes and offerings. I want you to understand, God takes the smallest acts of obedience and works the greatest miracles of faith. It's a law. It's a principle. When you get it, you're going somewhere. You're going to go somewhere. So I just want you to I just want you to honor the Lord and bless him with your with your offerings. And I, I I first pray, you know, I just you know what? You know what, my dear brother? Mike, you are just getting a major breakthrough. I feel an anointing of the Holy Ghost. I see an anointing and a working of the Spirit of the Living God on you, man. You humbled yourself before the Spirit of the presence of the Lord. And when you and you do that, something big happens. Hallelujah. Hakasaneya Sai. Urastapaneo, Urastapaneo, Urastapaneo say, Urastapaneo. Father, I thank you for this anointing that you place upon your servant that eclipses everything he's ever had in you. Go find a bunch of people. Go find people that you haven't hugged before. Or you haven't greeted before, you don't know. Just bless them. Just greet them. Hey, how are you doing? It's good to see you. You believing for a miracle for your mom? Huh? How are you doing? How are you? Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus Christ for the healing power that comes from heaven. Every foul spirit of affliction and every foul, foul spirit of torment in Jesus' name. I command to go off you and leave your spirit and your body alone in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Posatara. I'm going to take this in that with you. Jesus name you know one of the hardest things to handle is the afflictions of the mind that takes place deterioration of the mind that takes place when people get older okay and we just believe God for a miracle and for peace now in Jesus name 
It's good to see you here tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you do a work of grace in this life. I can't remember your name. You had to. Joe. Joe, yeah. Father, that Joe would turn himself completely over to you, that he can walk in the goodness of your life in every way. Joe, you are loved. You're beloved of the Lord. Christ Jesus loves you so much. He died for you and rose again. He want, and that's just, the, that's just the beginning of it. He's got so much more love to so, show you. All you got to do is be willing to participate. He's got a better life than you can imagine. And just invite you to come. Walk one day at a time, one step at a time. Participate. Just get in the program. Know that he loves you. Know that you're welcome in the kingdom of God. But you got to participate. You've got to take it. You've got an invitation, but you got to come to the party. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you for the anointing that breaks off every yoke. I remove off of Joe's life every mind-blinding spirit. In Jesus' name, Father, I thank you for the revelation. I thank you, God, for the understanding and the wisdom and the insight to know that you got the life and you alone got the life. So that Joe, from this day forward, come follow you, Lord Jesus. Come receive from you, Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of the living God. Debbie, it's good to see you. Lord bless her. Lord bless her. Who made my, who made my last oil? Who made my last oil? She did a good job. Yeah, it just smells like heaven. I don't like no sour old olive oil smell. <laughs> Smells like heaven. Hallelujah. Well, listen, we're willing to, I, I'm here to pray for anybody who has any needs, got any needs whatsoever. We're here to pray with you and for you. You sick in your body? You tormented in your mind? You afraid? You got some kind of afflictions haunting you? Huh. <laughs> well, I'm pray for you. You need to break through. My wife was telling me this morning, she said, Honey, you don't know how glad I was when I discovered that, that what the Trinity really was. Because the way I was taught in Catholic school, it was all spooky. I'm telling you, if you got some spooky doctrines, it ain't true doctrines. Amen. Huh? How the three people could be in one body. That just didn't work for me. Uh-uh. And then, you just, and then I came, got in your ministry, and you explained how Jesus was one person, Father was another person, Holy Ghost was yet another person, and they three were God, and wow, it wasn't spooky no more. So if you got some spooky doctors you need to get delivered from tonight, we're here to pray for you. Hallelujah. You get some spooky ideas about walking with God. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the anointing. Father, I thank you for your sweet presence. Lord, I thank you for the working power of the Holy Ghost that leads us in the paths of righteousness for your namesake. And I thank you, Father, that Ricky Schaefer is the one of those guys that's willing to learn how to walk in all the ways of righteousness. He's not looking for a go over to some place that's going to say we all unrighteous and loving it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Here, I'm put this over here. Let me put that right here. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Habasatea kila manda sea pai. Hala manda sea tisitalo. Nambrusatara nea kishti. See, the Lord said anybody, any man who prays or prophesies with his head covered, man with his head covered, dishonors his head. Jews today, Jewish people pray with their head covered. They're dishonoring the head Christ Jesus. They didn't do it in Paul's day because Paul's the one who said that. And that's why when I grab hold of people pray, I take their hat off of them. This all prayer, pray, could grabbing a prayer shawl and putting it over your head when you pray. You dishonor your head. You with you with me? It's a bunch of nonsense. It's a bunch of religion. Huh? Huh? Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm just believing God for a great anointing. I'm believing for God. I'm believing God for a great anointing on people's lives. I'm believing in God for a great anointing on Ricky's life. I'm, I'm believing God for that wonderful anointing, that call, that ability to be able to step over into prophecy and to 
speak by the Spirit and speak the Word of God only and be consecrated to living only in the realms of fellowship and communion with the Holy Ghost will be something so radically expressed to my brother's life. In Jesus' name, something that only the Holy Ghost can give you capacity to do. Freely I have received and freely I give to you right now. Right now. Right now. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Kilasana Neke. Hallelujah. Surataya. Suratane. Sele. Hallelujah. 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 Brad, come here. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for Brad one. Brad, the only one. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Powerful anointing. Powerful anointing. Powerful anointing for my son in the faith. Hallelujah. Powerful anointing. Powerful breakthrough. Hallelujah. Where's your wife? Where's Sandra? Sandy, come here. Hasidea. Halamonjea. Ha ha. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lusataya. Lusataya. Ha ha. Yes. Lana Hekai. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for the anointing. Just live in the sweet divine. Live in the sweet, live in the sweet divine. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Eat the fat. And drink the sweet. And send portions to them who have nothing prepared for them. For the joy of the Lord should be your strength in the day of adversity. When the enemy comes out against you, when he comes out like a flood, then you will lift up a standard by the presence and by the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I now, I command a blessing on you. I command a blessing on you. I command a blessing on you. Brad, one, I command a blessing on you. Father, I ask you to take it from them and give it to him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I ask you to take it from them and to give it to him. I command a blessing on you now. I tell you right now. I, all this trouble is over. The trouble is over. The trouble is ended. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, take it from them and give it to him. Shekata Moshe Atai. Hallelujah. Then you say, well, they'll be without. They don't need it. They don't need it. They're doing wrong things with it anyway. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh, uh, they don't need it. Whoever them are. And, of course, they'll let the Lord decide that. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. Ha, ha, ha. And that just comes right up out of your innermost being. Isn't that beautiful? How does this, ooh, rabbi say, king, and I, and could not. Just overwhelms you. Father, I thank you for causing your glory to overwhelm Brittany. Just surprise her. Surprise her with this overflow of heaven. Just surprise her. So. Su su surprise 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 in Jesus name in Jesus name a great faith great confidence a great cer certainty of just walking around saying it's mine it's done now if you if you get into if you get into the wrong thinking so people have a faith for it to happen in the future and then all they got is for the rest of their life, it's going to happen in the future. That means you're never going to have it. That ain't going to work. You're going to have to get a shift in your thinking. You need to get a shift in your faith. Hallelujah. And faith for it now. Faith is now. Faith says now. Thank you, Lord. It's a thanksgiving for what he's done. And though we haven't really understood it or we haven't fully understood of the expression of it or seen the expression of it, it's still done. And I can just worship him, enjoy him, 
understanding it's been gifted to me so that I can grow and mature in it so there's a greater expression of it. See, it's done. He says it's done. It's a gift that's given. It's mine. It's yours. Have it. Enjoy it so that now you can grow and mature in it. Otherwise, you'll never grow and mature in it. Hey, what do you want me to pray for? Let me just tell you something to your people. Look, I want to just, I want to help you understand. Keep your heart with all diligence. Don't let people define you. Don't let a job define you. Don't let anything in this life dictate to you what your successes are or your failures are or whatever. Don't try to live to please people and please things like, don't do that. It's wrong. Live only to please the Lord. Let Him alone tell you who you are and be very confident and comfortable there. Amen. That way, you can, that way you can go with change real easy. It's easy for you to be led. It's easy for you to be guided. Huh? I keep my heart with all diligence. I don't let sorrow come in my heart. Let not, hey. The Lord says to us. He says to us over and again to rejoice and to be glad. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Well, I'm going to obey him. I'm not going to let my heart. Now, Lord, if you feel troubled, you say, <clears throat> Now, Lord, you told me not to let my heart be troubled, and I'm feeling troubled. So, Holy Spirit, I ask you now to come strengthen me and fill me so that the trouble has to go away. And now I just thank you for it. Lord, you're so wonderful. And watch what happens. If you get stuck, oh, God, please, I ask you to let the trouble go away. And I feel, still feel the trouble. Lord, what's going on up in heaven? Can you hear me? I was ministering to a guy one day and just telling him about the goodness of the Lord. And had the Lord just, he, all he got to do is ask the Lord to answer. He said, well, I sure wish he would wake up. He's what he said. Well, that's what they said in Isaiah. Awake, awake, wake up, oh, Lord. I wish you would wake up. He is awake. Good news. But if you're just sitting there focused on the problem and the issue, you're not going to get anywhere. You just say, Lord, my heart is troubled. See this? Now, Lord, our Holy Spirit, I ask you to come to move the trouble out. And I thank you that you did it. And you begin to praise him and you worship him. Hallelujah. 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 You got that? Hallelujah. Let me see you just kind of do it a little bit. Just like this. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Father, for strengthening Raphael. Raphael, you're getting stronger every day. You're, going, you're getting stronger every day. You're not getting weaker every day. You're getting stronger every day. You're getting more resolved every day to walk with the Lord every day. You're more, you're more determined to let God have His way with you in your life. Every day, the fear of the Lord and trusting Him becomes stronger. Every day, you want less and less of anything that is wrong. You, more, you want more of that which is right and none of that which is wrong. Every day, your heart's being taught of God to hate evil and love righteousness. Isn't that great? Ha? Huh? Sola bakea. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Rusatea. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the anointing. It's increasing in Daryl's life. I'm just so thankful for the anointing that's in little Gabriel's life. Hallelujah. How to so to nay, I say. In his wonderful, his presence is wonderful. You know, you know what? I've always noticed when people bring their needs to the Lord Jesus and believe that he's going to meet those needs and heal them, the atmosphere gets stronger with his presence. That's just how earnest he is to meet everybody's needs. He loves it. He loves it. He loves it when we come to him for strength. We love it. He loves it when, he, when we come to Him for help, when we come to Him 
for those things that we need. Hallelujah. You just keep seeking the Lord. You keep being up here. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to get somewhere. I promise you that right now. I promise you that right now. It, you're so beautiful, baby. It's hard for me to keep my mind on this other, these other people. You know, it's wonderful to be married for 30 years and to be head over heels in love, you know. That, that's what happens. That's what happens when you let Jesus take over your life. <laughs> Things get better, not worse. The good thing never goes away. And if anybody needs to have an exposition on they're neither married nor given in marriage, but are as the angels, and you want to understand what that really means, come ask him. I, I believe there's a, just a special thing that the fa Father is going to do for people who are really in love with each other. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because he meant Adam and Eve to be together forever. Tell me he didn't. I know what Jesus was saying to those stupid Pharisees, uh, Sa uh, Sadducees. I know what he was saying to them. Huh? They're crazy little scenario. Seven brothers, one wife. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Now you let the word of Christ, the word of the anointed one, dwell in you richly. Hallelujah. So that you can admonish to yourself. So that you can speak to yourself. So you can prophesy over yourself. Hallelujah. So ko to manda this a perinea. Ze lacuna mambra day. Ha ha. Hallelujah. Bang do pa ye fraseo. Lando to stay. Okay. This today. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you, Father God. You give us the capacity to live like you, walk like you. Urasatai. <laughs> now, in the name of Jesus, just be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Just be baptized. Be filled up. Hallelujah. Filled. Basatarene. Be filled. Be filled. Be baptized in such a way that the rivers of God will flow out of you. You know, when the rivers of God flow out of you, nothing bad can be left on the inside of you. Did you know that? Did you know that? When the rivers of God flow out of you, praise God. You can't have anything in your life that's offense or unforgiveness or nothing else. Isn't that beautiful? Huh? Nothing can fix itself to you, attach itself to you. Just praise God. What is the chaff to the wheat, says the Lord? It's not my words like a fire. Hallelujah. Think about what his Holy Ghost pouring out of us like rivers is like. Mm-mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just worship him. Just worship him. Listen, girls in the back row. Listen, we really aren't. We in church. I mean, just don't. don't just stay right here in heaven. I, I want you to understand. If you don't get caught up in the anointing, you don't get, you're going to get caught up in the world. If you don't get ruined by Jesus, you're going to get ruined by the devil. I'm going to tell you right now. Huh? If you don't learn how to hook up with the anointing. If the anointing's not beautiful to you, you will never understand how to flow in it. Some people need relationship with other people more than they need relationship with Jesus, and that needs to change. We, you know, we want to just talk with each other and need pat on each other and feel one another and touch one another. You need to feel, touch, pat Jesus. <laughs> life, the, the life in this world is filled with a lot of disappointments. 
still a lot of disappointment. Still a lot of devastating things. Things don't work out for nobody. You hear me? The only thing that changes that is the dynamic of walking with Christ Jesus. That's the only thing that changes that. Then it works out just fine. Hallelujah. The fact is, an abundant life is glorious life. And you're going to have to understand that that's just the way it is. And, and I, I can't help it. You know, if you haven't had right models and significant other people in your life, that's, I can't, can't help that. But I'm going to just tell you right now. God's got a model for you, and you want to follow that model. Christ Jesus. He, he's got a model for you. He's got the Holy Spirit. He's, and you've got people around you. Well, we want you to respect the anointing. Respect the moving of God. We want you to respect the things of God. We're not over. We're flowing in the Holy Ghost. It's in this context that we believe prophecy comes forth. Word of knowledge comes forth. We believe miracles happening. We're believing for gifts of healing to take place. And how are you ever going to be a part of that if you just basically go off in little groups? Huh? If you're interested in God, you're going to get up close. You know where you're going to find me? At the judgment seat of Christ? I'm going to be in the front. If you want to be in the back talking with one another, well, you know what? Suit yourself. I'm going to be up front. I'm going to be up front now. I'm going to be up front then. I'm not going to be sitting back just petting myself and loving on myself. Oh, me. Take care of me. Oh, did you hear what they did to me? wonder who likes me, who doesn't like me. Jesus. Give it up for heaven. Give it up for the Lord. Hallelujah. Start living your life in a way that God can fill you up with every good thing. Come on, man. Come on into heaven. Come on, get on out of earth. Come on into heaven. Heaven's a good place to be. Heaven's good. We in heaven. I mean, just try to help convince you heaven's good. Heaven's a wonderful place to be. everything that you need. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. How you doing? How you doing, baby? Doing good? Are you doing good? Are you obeying mama and daddy? Huh? You sleeping good at night? You're good, baby. You're good, baby. You're good, baby. Lord Jesus, touch him right now. Touch him right now. Touch mom. Touch mom. <laughs> Touch baby. Lord, we just wait on you. We just wait on you. We love your presence, Lord. Lord, we love your presence. Lord, we love your presence. Lord, we love being in heaven, living in heaven. We love the realms of your life. We love being with you and being in you. You're the best place to be. You're the best place to be, Lord. Now, in the name of Jesus Christ, I snatch that old pain out of your heart. Now, it ain't going to be messing with you no more. Now, in Jesus' name, tonight's this night. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, this whole affliction, this whole affliction goes from you. So affliction, it goes from you. Now I command it to go in Jesus' name and leave you alone. From this day forward and forevermore. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah.
tonight, listen to me. I want you to grab a hold of this as you're walking out of here. Cast all your cares upon him. Don't hold on to your cares. Talk about your cares. Carry your cares, your worries, your concerns, your issues. If you'll do that, then you're going to be able, you're going to be liberated then to just worship him. You're going to be liberated to begin to agree with what God said in his word. And it's going to start coming out of your mouth. And you're going to start ministering to yourself that what God said over his word. And then you're going, you are then going to be conformed to the word. Because his word works mightily in them that believe. His word with confession. That confession of his word. The declaration of his word. The acknowledgement of the thing that he has done produces an entirely different realm people have not because they do not obey God and walk with him in this way they live they live always beneath when father purposed them to live above they don't step into the blessings of God they're not even real the blessings of God are not even real to them they live under a yoke of sorrow and oppression you alone where's my wife I have her men I have and get up and minister this you alone break that you alone stand up and say, I'm not going to be sad and beaten down anymore. I'm not going to live under this oppressive thing of disappointment anymore. I'm not doing it. I'm appointed, not disappointed. Amen. Amen. Minister to yourself. Preach a sermon to yourself, in other words. Declare the word of God over yourself. Declare good news to yourself. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Speak faith. Quit speaking doubt. If you're not speaking faith, it's doubt. Stop speaking curses. If you're not speaking blessings, you're cursing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, give you wisdom and understanding. You know, if the Lord asked me, I, I want to just pair this out for you just so you can understand real clearly. If the Lord asked me and said, Mark, what would you like? Would you like me to give you $100 million? Or would you like to, for me to give you wisdom and a greater dimension of faith? What do you reckon I'm going to choose? I'm going for the wisdom and greater dimension of faith. Because that ain't going to ruin me. That ain't going to mess me up. And unless you have a huge vision, unless you've got a huge thing going on in the kingdom of God, you wouldn't know what to do with $100 million anyways. I wouldn't know what to do with $100 million because of where I'm moving. And I pray that you get to be moving in a realm of expectation in God and determination in God and your hands laid to the plow to where you need all of that to fund the things that God's put on your heart to do. Because otherwise it would indeed ruin you, just mess you all up. You know what to do with it. You with me? Hallelujah. You're blessed. You're blessed. I'm just believing, I'm believing the Lord for a special supernatural blessing. Supernatural blessing upon Summer's artwork. And she's doing some great artwork. In fact, she's, she's going to do a painting for me. And you just decide what kind of painting that you want her to do for you and then just give her a hundred dollars to do it and she's going to do you a great oil painting yeah and I'm believing God for the, I'm believing God for a great anointing here now the supernatural anointing supernatural it's already great so it's really very skilled supernatural anointing I just I want to see more of the artists in this church get together for the sole purpose of just flowing in the anointing with the artwork. Annalyn's also an artist. There's a bunch of different artists around here. They have a supernatural ability on that to communicate the word through painting. Hey? To communicate the word of God. Not some prophetic vision of a lightning bolt coming out of the moon, striking somebody in the head. I'm talking about communicate the word of God. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
time for the majesty and the splendor of the Lord to be made manifest through our lives. Father wants to do something credible. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Elizabeth and I, we want to lay hold on something in the realm of media in terms of filmmaking. Because the gospel just has such a great platform to be preached and ministered to a generation who doesn't know anything about the things of God. And all oh, the display of the power of God that could be, could be given and the stories that could be told. You know, with, with baby... We're trying to find cartoons, for example, that can match what the world is doing. Because she, little baby, she just, she just entertained. She just entertained. And we try to show her, well, here's, here's the, you know, jelly tellies and the other gospel, you know, all the gospel bills and whatever. And they're just like boring. And she gets the boring look on her face. And then she wants to be back over here with all, the people who really are very creative, put a lot of, you know, they put, their, they put the talent into it that captivates the little guys. We, 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 look, come on now. We got to do this thing. And, and a, a, dry, a large part of that's going to happen is an event on, on our knees because we take a, a hold of a faith realm in God. Oh, God, take it from them and give it to me. Father, I ask you to take it from them and give it to me. Father, take it from them and give it to me. So I can do it for you, do, do with it for you. So I can preach the gospel with it. Huh? Do we believe that? We believe that. We, we work for us persuaded of these things. Hallelujah. We want you to get a big vision for heaven. Start living for heaven. I'm going to say this to you. And I'm going to let you go. If I were to take the life and ministry of Jesus of three years and make it a scale of a lifetime. Two-thirds of that lifetime, the disciples just stood around Jesus watching him. 30 years, Jesus did nothing but just get prepared. Two-thirds of that time, the, 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 because about two out of the three years, it was about right into the second year when Jesus released the disciples to go out and minister on his behalf. And, and you know, I wanna, what I want to say is this. The Lord wants you to have... Pentecost. He wants to, you to be so overwhelmed with the glory of heaven. You've got to recognize things that would stand in your way that keep you from being at the divine appointment to be at Pentecost. Things that would distract you. Things that you would allow in your spirit. If there's something wrong in your spirit, it's going to work something bad in your body. It's going to work something bad in your relationships around you. It's going to have a fallout. Sin has a fallout. Believe me. You can't afford any of it. So we just talking to you. We've been talking to you about learning righteousness. We've been talking to you about the spiritual laws of life. Talking to you tonight about the word of faith in your mouth and in your, in your heart. And prophesying over yourself and how prophecy is so easy because the springboard of it is praise. Thanksgiving. It's really easy. That's where it comes from. So simple. You want to prophesy? First of all, oh, you need to get happy. Amen. So just do these simple things and just be confident of God's love for you. Just be comfortable with Him. Comfortable with Him at the same time of being very desperate and hungry for more. Desire the real and the genuine. You won't have the fake. Don't go out ahead of God. Let God fill you up and overwhelm you. He's powerful enough to take over your emotions and speak through you. So just learn to wait on Him. Just learn to be in His presence. Learn to just be happy and thankful. Amen. And watch how, watch how good things will get. Amen. Okay, second round of hugging, everybody. Second round. Round two.